Taylor was verbally aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler, and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Bee that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years. And I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom, and for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Ray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. According to attendees of a karaoke night at Charlie's Bar and Grill, a man 30 seconds into singing Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror better get his act together and get it together fast. He f***ed up from the get-go, coming in late on that first line singing totally off-key. He needs to shape up and get his head in the game pronto. Na, 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 na. Honestly, he needs to get serious right now or get the f off the stage. I mean, what does he think this is? Living on a prayer? Claiming that this is turning into a train wreck, eyewitnesses say they are embarrassed for the man who has missed several key words despite staring at the prompter the entire time. You know, he could hit every last note for the remainder of the song, and I still don't know if that would be enough to turn this thing around. Man in the Mirror is the big leagues, so you better show up with your a -game. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're doing the live Saturday edition, and you can, of course, take control of the airwaves here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 
450-3733. Some disturbing uh, drug-related news. I've got a few different, uh, we have a few different stories here tonight. Uh, one of them about the United States absolutely failing to stop Afghan opium poppy growth despite spending $7 billion. Plus, the DEA is back at it in California. I don't know if they ever stopped, but they're continuing to raid uh, medical marijuana facilities. But, Mark, you've got something that strikes closer to home for anybody that's got kids in the government school system. And that describes probably a lot of people listening to this broadcast. A lot of people that have kids, that's for sure. Yeah, well, the, lots of people do have kids. And if you've got kids, they're probably going to government schools. In all likelihood. Uh, so what is the story that you want to share? From Fox4KC.com, Mapleton, Utah. A homework assignment at a junior high school in Utah was quickly rescinded when a parent complained that it was an invasion of privacy. The students were told to write down the type of medications in their family's medicine cabinet. They were to list the medications when they expire, if they're FDA approved. Um, one of the mothers posted the homework assignment on Facebook, and it spread like wildfire on mm. social media. No doubt. It makes perfectly good sense that it would. Um, although it's uh, maybe a good idea for parents to do an inventory of their medicine cabinet, I believe it's inappropriate for students <laughs> to counsel their parents or report to the school what the inventory is, uh, said apparently the mother of a student. And I think that this is absolutely true. And this is elementary school? Is that right? I I. I don't have the, okay. the the grade here on this one. Um, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. So it is. I mean, that's really the 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 whole of the story. Kids were given an assignment in health class, and I can see how a so health it wasn't class dare teacher, class then. It wasn't dare class. Okay. I can see why a health teacher would say, "Hey, you know, it's a bad idea to have expired medications," mm -hmm. and. Maybe you should go through your medicine cabinet and take a look at that. And, of course, if you tell a kid to do something, you're going to have to make it into an assignment because otherwise they're not going to do it. Hey, you know what you should do? No, that's not going to work out. So if you turn it into an assignment, then you'll find out that information. But this is the government. This is a government employee, a government bureaucrat, sending home our, um, you know, least savvy to basically find out whether you're committing a felony or not. Yeah, if that's you've got, scary. If you've got pain relievers, specifically narcotic pain relievers, which are prescribed all over this country, mm -hmm. and they're expired or they're in somebody else's name, like it's you're not, going to prison. You know, it's not like anybody listening to me. It's not like I have never possessed a prescription drug prescribed to somebody else. It's common. And it's especially common within a family, right? So sure. I mean, it's one thing to give a friend something, but it's really fairly common with a with family members saying, "Hey, uh, you know, I've got a headache or whatever, or I've, I've got a, I've got some pain. I know you got some Lortab. Uh, can you give me one of them?" I mean, I ruptured my eardrums uh, scuba diving, and I, a family member gave me a uh, uh, one of these, you know, hydroconodes or something like that's that. That's a felony. Yeah, it's a felony. It's a felony for them to give it to you, and a felony for you to have it. Right, and this is the. Th Thing that, Which is you know, ridiculous. A lot of uh, you know the, the pretentious of us who think, oh, it's a nation of laws, and it's sure you know you know how you don't get in trouble. You don't break the law, stupid. <laughs> what have you got to hide? Right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's. If you have, if you think that way, let me bring a cop into your uh, bathroom, and we'll go through your medicine cabinet mm. before you've had a chance to. Yeah. Now this is essentially what this school has done. Now I'm not saying that they intended to catch anyone. The school rescinded this policy when parents, you know, basically came out with the torches and the pitchforks. They're claiming it was a mistake, and it's a good thing that the parents responded in this way. And I wonder if parents in other areas, maybe California, for instance, would be more obedient. Would there be an area of the United States where people have been, uh, would be less likely to speak out against this? Would just, uh, this assignment would go on without a really anybody saying anything until finally it's too late and the police get this information. Now, maybe the health teacher in this case really did innocently put this assignment together, or maybe it's she a was good asked idea. to. It's a good idea to go through and throw away uh, expired medications, especially highly expired medications. It's easy for people to kind of you know, end up with stuff. I, I've got pigs and some somebody f uh, cleaned out their freezer recently. There's dates on these vegetables from the mid nineties. Mm, they've had, they, they've had their, these things in their freezer oh, wow. <laughs> for going on. 
Oh, 20 years. <laughs> 20 years. It's crazy. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they, I'm sure they've got something in their medicine cabinet that's just as horrifying, <laughs> right? It's a good idea to go through and clean that out. That's not my complaint here. But the conspiracy theorist in me says... This is them running something up a flagpole to see who will salute. And fortunately, these parents had a fit about it. Right. But who knows? You know, who knows how many times this has been done before? Where this information has ended up? This uh, story out of KSL.com in Salt Lake City says this was a junior high school. Uh, at the top of the assignment, it explained how a major reason for drug abuse in Utah County is people aren't safely disposing of medications. The instructions asked the student to go home, look in their medicine cabinets, and report back the names, what they're being used for, and if it's still being used. And uh, none of these students would have known that, the, that they'd essentially would have been snitching on their own parents right. in this instance. And thank goodness some of the parents realized this, the danger of this, and spoke out. And this is what I was told when, you know, in the mid 1970s, when my mom's driving me around in the uh, the, the cutlass with the cabrio top thing, uh, you know, when they used to actually just glue fabric to the top of cars, mm -hmm. um, and. She was. I was asking, well, what's it like in Russia? You know, the Soviet Union was a was the bad guy back then. Right, the Cold and, War. And specifically, the thing she told me that was bad about the Soviet Union was they would turn their kids against their parents by doing things like this. Well, now look. Um, it's I don't know. It's important to point out here that okay, let's take this at face value. And believe that the health teacher here really didn't know that this was a bad thing and she just really wanted the kids to inventory their medicine cabinets and it was an innocent assignment. And let's believe that, you know, it wasn't handed down on high from the Department of Homeland Security. Well, we do know that as part of D.A.R.E. class that uh, students in the government schools have absolutely been asked, elementary age students, because I remember when I started D.A.R.E., it was in fifth grade, and I, from what I understand it, they've started doing it early, earlier years. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, you're fairly young when you get into your first D.A.R.E. class. Yeah, well, you don't want to catch them after they've done drugs. <laughs> right, and so they'll actually, uh, they'll actually encourage the students in D.A.R.E. class to tell on their parents. If your parents are using marijuana... Please tell us. We want to get them help. Yeah. And what help looks like is a jail cell. It's a room with right. bars on it. And that'll help them a lot. Yeah. It'll help you into a foster home or grandma and grandpa's house if you're lucky. Um, and, uh, I mean, it's this is horrifying. Consider that there was a story recently, about three weeks ago, where a child, I think this story is about three weeks ago, might, might have been slightly more than that, a child was taken away from their family because the father smoked pot, and I think it was oh. Colorado or Washington where it was legal. Oh, no. I remember that was an interesting part of the story. Mm -hmm. And the child was taken away for that reason, put in a foster home, and the foster parent killed her. Oh. Abused her to death. That's horrifying. Now, no, the 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 the, um, the DHS, the Department of whatever kids, the the uh, DCS, yeah, whatever, Department of Family everywhere. Services or whatever yeah. it is, that organization receives money for every kid that they manage to place somewhere. Mm. The foster parents get money. There's just money moving all around when they take keep people's kids away. I'm not going to call it a kidnapping industrial complex, but it's getting there. And in this case, some kid was murdered because her father smoked pot. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, you're welcome to share with us how you feel at 855 450 free. I mean, does anybody could anybody listening actually support kids going home, inventorying their parents' uh, medicine cabinet, and bringing back that information to the school to be used in whatever way? Because I can't imagine there would be many people out there who do, but you know, there are some drug warriors out there. I mean, and if you are a drug warrior, I know you probably won't be calling in, but we'd love for you to at 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. If you are a drug warrior, you know, let us know how you feel about encouraging kids to snitch on their parents. I think that's a healthy thing to do. Let's break up some families in the name of the war on drugs. 855 450 free. That is the SACL, or excuse me, the uh, Pro XPN toll free line. You can take control of the airwaves here and bring up whatever you want on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. There's more coming up. Oh, and join us on Skype at lrn.fm. That's our username there. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. 
and no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Join us here on the phones at 855-450-FREE. We're talking about kids in government school encouraged to snitch on their own parents. Now, they say in the story out of Utah, Mark, that you were sharing earlier, uh, it's different sources. I've got one from ksl.com. But uh, they say that it was an accident, that uh, this wasn't some sort of plot to try to reveal the medicine cabinets of uh, the kids' parents, but that was what they were asked to do. They were asked to go home by their health teacher and inventory their parents' medicine cabinets, writing down what's in there. Is it FDA approved? What's the expiration date on it? What names are on the bottles? All kinds of information they wanted to collect. And now the school is backing away saying, whoa, we didn't know this was happening. The health teacher came up with it on her own. And I don't know if I believe them, but nonetheless, it's uh, disturbing 
development. Yeah, I what what I want to know is do you believe the story? Do you believe that it's fault or that it was a, a mistake? A mistake. Do you believe it was a mistake and the school's backing away from it because they mm. didn't have anything to do with it? Or do you think they're backing away from it? Ho, 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 ho. We got caught. Thank God yeah. we put this teacher out there to take the bullet. Um, mm. I don't know the answer. Good question. Our toll-free number, if you'd like to speculate, 855-450-FREE. But you can, uh, you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and load up on some legal drugs. There, <laughs> Just uh, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. We uh, will give you a free pound of coffee. You sign up for the subscription. You can cancel it at any time. It's delicious, shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. This is among the best coffee you have ever tasted in your life. I guarantee it. Uh, go check it out, coffee.freetalklive.com. What's different about BuzzBox Coffee, because you can find high-end coffee on the Internet, or likely if you live in a uh, you know a major metro or whatever, you can get high-end coffee somewhere in your city. What's different is is that they they put they give back to us so that we can give to Kiva.org a percentage of the profits. And we were able to help people around the world get microloans in order to get themselves out of poverty. Now, I believe the only way you're going to be able to get out of poverty is to work your way out, to get something to to have something that you've earned yourself. That's why I love the idea of microloans. And, uh, you know, the individual knows what they need in their life far more than you know, some big company. Coffee.freetalklive.com if you believe like I do and want to help people up out of poverty. Coffee.freetalklive.com. So you can speculate if you'd like, but I think the larger question here, Mark, about the uh, the medicine cabinet story where students were sent home with the uh, suggestion, the well, homework assignment, that they had to inter- uh, in inventory their parents' medicine cabinet, whether that was or was not a mistake. We know that in things like D.A.R.E. class, that students, young students, uh, as young as elementary school, have absolutely been encouraged to tell on their parents for smoking cannabis. And do you think that it's a good thing to encourage kids to snitch on their own parents? We'd love to hear from you if you advocate that snitching. The toll-free number here tonight, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Vinny. He's listening in Virginia to WNIS. Hey, Vinny. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, first of all, I do not agree, obviously, with kids being told to snitch on their parents for smoking something that is less harmful than cigarettes and alcohol. Um, aside from that, I just wanted to say that I believe that this health teacher was probably, I'm kind of torn. I think that maybe she was doing it on purpose. Or, and But, I mean, you have to be pretty dumb to do that. Uh, so I think it was kind of on purpose, actually. But I just wanted to say to all those people out there that are listening, if you're a Republican, you voted for this. You know what I'm saying? You think that the Republicans are uh, behind this? I mean, Al Gore and no, Tipper no, no, Gore? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the war on drugs was originally a Republican invention. Well, it was and Nixon's it invention, but 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 hold on just a second. Bill Clinton added uh, police uh, into the the war on drugs mix in the 90s. I'm not saying, and and then what I was going to say after that was that it was Democrats as well. So, but what my message so, is. If you voted for Democrats or Republicans, this is what you voted for is what you're trying to say? You you reap what you sow. Exactly. I will agree with you on that statement. I'm not going to lay this entirely at the door of Republicans. I'll give you 65-35 just for kicks. I'm not saying that it's all Republicans. I'm saying that it was initially Republicans. So these Republicans can't say, oh, it's those damn liberals again, you know, taking away our rights. Yeah, that much is true. So if you vote Libertarian, if you don't want to have your family getting taken away for smoking pot and, you know, people getting life in prison for buying Yeah, marijuana. it's too bad the Libertarians can't like get more that. than 3% in a, in a three-way race. So. But, uh, Vinny, thanks for your call tonight, they, except they look, in New Hampshire. Well, but, they look really good in Florida right now. Um, Florida has a, a really – has it's, it's, it's crucible because um, hmm. you can see that they really have two crap sandwiches. They have two governors that yeah. they've already had as governors. They know how bad these guys are. That's true. And, yeah. this, uh, and fellow, one of them was a Republican who changed to a Democrat, Yeah, right? yeah. So he's, you know, just, you know, distasteful as he could possibly be. I'm never going to like the guy. I went before him uh, to get a pardon for, you know, 
a crime so that I could vote in the state of Florida, and he turned mm-hmm. me down. Um, so I'm never going to like that guy, Charlie Crist. But and, and I don't like Rick Scott either. But this guy Wiley that they have running in the Libertarian, yeah, Libertarian in Florida, he's looking to at this point looking at uh, 10%. 10% wasn't is, enough to get him in the debate. Apparently, no, it always is that way. They want to keep uh, the Libertarian out every time. But if he manages to if he manages to get – all you have to do is get 34% at that point in a three-way race. Mm. So he's not that far from it. Well, that's very optimistic, Mark. Uh, oh, I don't we'll think see. he's going to get it. But <laughs> 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 I mean, I like the guy, and he's really you articulate. If I was in Florida, I would vote I for him. him. And here's the reason. Because people are always like, well, this is, you know, this is a really important election. I've got to put my vote out there. <laughs> no, no. Look, mathematically, you have one vote. And if you're talking about – 100,000 people voting in the state of Florida. I think there's 21 million, something close to that. If you're talking about 21 million people vo- potentially can vote, your one vote, you have the chance of win. It's it's like winning the lottery that your vote is going to make a difference. I'm not going to say it's not going to count. I'm going to say it's not going to matter because if – you know, Charlie Crist wins or loses by 10,000 votes and you vote instead for uh, you, you can pull it out and p- put your vote on Wiley instead. Then he the wins or loses by nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. It just doesn't matter. Let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. Kyle is in Wisconsin. Kyle, where are you at tonight in Wisconsin? Do we have Kyle in Wisconsin? Uh, yeah, hey. I'm uh, driving home right now. Oh, cool. Just... Work and I uh, was listening to your radio and heard about the. Little kids is gonna snoop on their folks, and I'm more conservative. Than most people probably call your show, but that teacher needs to go back, take a history course, and find out about the Hitler Youth Movement in Germany. Mm. Now, what about it? I mean, how does that relate? Well, you know, the Hitler Youth were encouraged to uh, spy on their parents, tell them if they uh, were deviating from the party line, and it's just a small mm. step from looking at mom and dad's uh, medicine cabinet to taking the next step and saying mom and dad said a bad thing about whatever party wants to manipulate it absolutely so let me give you a little trouble here we know that they do this in dare class right okay and it's a nation of laws isn't it yeah well if you're going to have laws you might as well have everybody enforcing them shouldn't you okay you should have people enforce the law but also there are constitutional protections against wives testifying against husbands and That's other true. members of the family testifying against people within their family. Yeah, I think so. And if the kid doesn't know, isn't old enough to know that he's protected from... Then uh, he's the best uh, recruit out there. Hang on. <laughs> uh, Kyle, uh, thank you for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. There's more coming up. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. 
Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you to go this way? You can't do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This no, is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. No. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. You just dial in toll-free here. Bring up whatever you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's toll-free and brought to you by ProXPN. What is ProXPN? Well, it's a global virtual private network. And if you care about privacy online, it's a tool that you need to have in your inventory. Uh, in fact, it's really useful. You connect to ProXPN. You can do it for free. Just download their software at proxpn.com slash FTL. You can get it for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, even Linux. Uh, you can get it set up with Linux, a little bit of different setup with Linux, but it's actually pretty easy to do. I've actually gone through the steps. So proxpn.com slash FTL. You get their software, get connected, your internet connection becomes encrypted, meaning your internet service provider will not know what you're doing online anymore, and they're probably spying on you. They're probably, uh, they're probably logging all of the websites you visit. All of the search terms that you're entering, they may be keeping those logs in some cases for as long as five years. So you can stop that from happening tonight by going and getting ProXPN at ProXPN.com slash FTL. As I said, you can get started for free, but you're going to want to upgrade to their premium account where you get the unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, you can privately torrent, and get past regionally blocked websites. Do it all for f about five bucks a month. Actually, a little bit less than that. If you use code FTL50, FTL like Free Talk Live 50, the number 50 as in 50% 50 off of the price of the annual account. And that discount is good, by the way, for the lifetime of your account. So go and get signed up at proxpn.com slash FTL. Maybe you've got Bitcoin. You'll want to pay with Bitcoin. You'll save even more. You'll save 62% by using code FTLBTC on the annual account there and paying with Bitcoin. So ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online habits and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use the code FTL50 or FTLBTC and great, uh, get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. Let's go back to your phone calls and thoughts. Young people in junior high school sent home by a health teacher told to inventory their parents' medicine cabinets. Parents got upset, rightfully so. This is incredibly an invasive thing to do, and it could set them up for felony charges. If you've got, oh, yeah. uh, I'm not a lawyer, but it's my understanding that uh, if you've got expired medicine in your medicine cabinet, uh, that is controlled medication, if you've got medicine that does not have your name on it, then you could be looking at felony charges. You could be looking at, I remember they put a guy in a wheelchair in prison for 25 years in Florida over that. 
before. So they take it very, very seriously, and they're essentially asking their kids to put their parents into that position. Now, the school said— But doesn't this make sense? I mean, when you make a government school— Mm-hmm. And the government is trying to throw people in jail for having the wrong items in their medicine cabinet. Why in the world wouldn't the government school try to get to find out information as to whether or not you're raising the kids in an evil, terrible environment? Well, that's why it's plausible to me that this was a purposeful thing. The school saying, oh, we didn't know. This is well, not good. They're already want- doing it in D.A.R.E. class to well, some that's extent. Why. That's why I suspect that this is uh, something that was coming down from on high. But even if it wasn't, they are doing stuff like this in D.A.R.E. class. And I'm wondering how you feel about it let's go to ken in wisconsin ken where are you calling from in wisconsin tonight uh wisconsin dells okay don't know where that is but uh welcome to free in the dells to free to free talk live go ahead with your thoughts okay uh i'll try and be brief because there's a lot here um i listened to a kgb defector 30 years ago and he described conditions in the soviet union at the time is that everyone informed on their neighbor mm-hmm and that was the culture that they had cultivated, that everybody was informing on each other. And that's that's what this reminds me of in that regard. Absolutely. Uh, in well, fact, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of the idea. In Soviet Union, we're all comrades. We're all part of the government. Um, we're all in this together. And when you're not following the rules as the l- rules are laid out, then you're not doing it. And I hear this kind of thing all the time. I mean, what does we the people really mean? Right. It means that this is a government of the people, by the people, for the people. It's the same kind of concept. Well, and is there really any difference between, uh, you know, snitching out your neighbor for the good of the party or snitching out your neighbor for a $50 bounty. I mean, because that's what the difference is in the United States. I don't know if you remember, there's actually another story that came to mind here that's very relatable to this. Uh, It was a few years ago now, Mark, I don't know if you remember this one, where the students were sent home with the uh, suggestion that they find things wrong with their neighbor's yards. Yeah, right. Zoning violations. Right. They were, you know, while you're walking home from school on the bus, you might as well take a look at your neighbor's yards and see whether yeah. or not they need a good clipping. Ken, continue your thoughts. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. One more thing then. Uh, the This happened in a sense to a doctor friend of mine. Now, you know, it's it's illegal in our country to treat people for cancer with any other method other than an ADA approved uh, or AMA approved. And he was treating people successfully with things he knew worked for him. Hmm. And so he got raided, office raided, all his patient files oh, taken by the the team that arrested him. And uh, then he they sent out letters. The DA sent out letters to every one of his patients, hoping someone would give an accusation they could nail him on. Mm. And so it, it's a reverse thing where they they were fishing for something from every family. This is where they sent letters out to everyone, trying to get someone to provide evidence, because. What are you going to do? Tell a guy you shouldn't help people? No, they had to find some technicality to nail them on. Disturbing. Ken, thanks for sharing the story tonight. Appreciate yeah. hearing from you. The toll free number is 855 450 free. You know, uh, snitching. It's become fairly common in this society. And well, look, they have uh, they they tell you to snitch on your neighbors. We'll give you a we'll give you money. That's just that's one thing I wanted to point out here before we continue with your calls. You, I remember driving into New York City with you, Mark, and uh, you know we go to a talk radio conference there every year. And there's usually some billboard up that you know gives you a phone number. And do you know where there's a gun in New York City? Call this number, and you could earn a thousand dollars for snitching out your neighbors or family or whoever. We don't care. Snitch them out and you'll get paid. Yeah. Now, in a down economy, now it's tempting enough just on any uh, any uh, old day to collect $1,000 for making a phone call. It's tempting to the average person, I think, enough. But when times are tough, it makes it even more of an incentive. If you're having trouble paying the bills, you're having trouble uh, making the rent payments or whatever, and then you know that you can uh, snitch out your, you know, the brother you don't like or something like that because he's got a gun and you know it. Might then, take you a little while to come to that conclusion. You see the su- billboard on the on the side of the road. You think, eh, well, you know, I know that Jim's got a, a gun in the house. And then, you know, a couple of months later, things are getting really tight. And then you think, oh, yeah, I could get a grand this way. I mean, that's not okay. I'm not advocating this no, at all. But- I'm just pointing out that that's in a, t- in a tough economy. It makes snitching more likely than it otherwise I would. I think this is what is – I think that this is what America's coming to. It only makes sense with all the laws, more laws than one single person can read in four lifetimes. Mm-hmm. I'm not kidding. That's the math. 
four lifetimes to read the laws. And What was that, eight-hour days if you sat down? For I think it was uh, ten-hour days, but I don't know. The numbers were incredibly high. Let's go to Mike. He's also in Wisconsin in the Madison area listening to WXXM. Uh, go ahead, Mike. Uh, yeah, hi, guys. Um, Welcome. Uh, hi. Uh, in response to um, the stuff about the teacher with this assignment, I think you guys are way off base. Way what? off base. Which base are you referring to? Um, <laughs> to, to suggest that, uh, that a public school teacher has nothing better to do than to, uh, in a, uh, you know, whatever, um, KGB way, <laughs> try and... Uh, uh, try and find drug violations in their students' homes, and we're talking about expired medication, which it's not illegal to have expired medication. Actually, I believe that it is. Uh, Certain types of medication, I believe that's true. That uh, if you have expired hydrocodones or something like that, that that could be illegal. All right, I've, I've never, ever heard of anything like that it's also true that if you have somebody else's medication in your medicine cabinet i.e like you know your grandmother's or something like that uh with a different name on it then that's also illegal from my understanding i'm not a lawyer but that's what i understand about it sure sure and i'm not saying you the teacher didn't have anything better to do mike i'm suggesting that this could have been something she was told to do uh yeah well the thing is well in my opinion is probably just um a very uh misguided lesson on um, expired drugs. Probably. How you it probably is, but what about when the... Uh, house because what? that's the health concern, is that if you take expired meds uh, or have them lying around for children to take or find or experiment with, um, and, and that's logical. Like It's obviously not in good taste or not considerate. Sure, to, but what about the D.A.R.E. Um, class where you know, they are yeah. definitely uh, telling their kids to snitch on their parents? How do you feel about that? Yeah, no, I, I went through D.A.R.E. and... and, and <laughs> I mean, it was it was silly, but they never. Ever One when dare did you go class. Through, when did you go through dare? Hang on, we'll let you continue in moments. It's free talk live. The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual fall flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot. And pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20-month special financing. And get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Fall flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. A little over a year ago, I began to do a lot of research into why, even though I had a pretty good-sized meal, that I was still starving. And my research led me to a well-known fact that most of the soils that we grow our crops on here in the United States and across the industrialized world are almost completely depleted of almost all of the key minerals and trace elements that our bodies need to rebuild themselves, fight off cancer, and be healthy. I then searched out the best vitamin and mineral company out there and discovered Longevity. The Longevity products are designed to give you the real nutrition you need, and once you've got that, you don't have to eat as much to be satisfied. I've lost 37 pounds in two months, simply getting the vitamins and minerals I need. Check it out for yourself. It's incredible. Go to InfoWarsTeam.com today and order your first canister of Beyond Tangy Tangerine Complete Multivitamin Mineral Complex Dietary Supplement. That's InfoWarsTeam.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. 
Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 35% of U.S. credit accounts are facing collection agencies. Of that 35, almost 40% are the result of medical bills. Before uninsured friends or family go in for medical treatment, send them to asiarunlikehellguide.com. No computer tracing, no tracking cookies. They will not go on a list. Privacy matters. Just tell us what you need. Get a quote. Fractions of U.S. prices. asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in to the program here. And again, you can bring up anything you want. We are talking about the Snitch Society. Uh, there's been a, apparently an assignment in a Utah school, a junior high school, sending uh, the students home to raid their parents' medicine cabinets and write down what medicines are in there, whether they are FDA approved, whether they are expired, whether they are uh, assigned to someone who lives in the household, that kind of stuff. School board uh, backed down. They said, whoa, whoa, we didn't know this was happening. We're sorry about this. We uh, definitely didn't mean to do this. We didn't know she was the teacher was going to do this, etc. Our speculation on the show is that, uh, well, maybe they did know this was happening. Maybe this was something that was ordered from the folks in law enforcement, Department of Homeland Security. Now, uh, Mark, you found some sort of article that claims that having expired medications is not uh, illegal, but uh, that's just their opinion. It's just a legal opinion. It's a legal opinion. I mean, I... I, it's it's the first thing I've seen on it. I certain I've heard elsewhere um, something else, but that doesn't matter. This is what the internet yields, and the internet basically says that uh, you can have expired oxycodones as long as they're in your name, but you better have the bottle. Now, uh, that's definitely true that having somebody else's prescription medication is a felony charge, from what I understand. Maybe a dead relative. Whoever. Well, I mean, these things happen. I know. <laughs> I've seen a medicine yeah. cabinet of a person that I know that has oxycodones from a dead relative in it. Let's go to Mike. He's back on with us here. And, and one thing is definitely true. Whether Maybe you think this was an innocent mistake by a health teacher. It's definitely true that in D.A.R.E. classes, they have absolutely encouraged kids to turn their own family members in if they are drug users, even marijuana users. Mike in Wisconsin disbelieves that. Yeah. You said it didn't happen to you in your D.A.R.E. class. How old are you, Mike? Uh, I went to D.A.R.E. in the mid-'80s, like like the heart of the say no to drugs, mm -hmm. Reagan, uh, all that stuff. Uh, and then as a senior in high school, I actually taught D.A.R.E. classes. Oh, and yikes. And nowhere in, nowhere in the curriculum of me taking it as a student, and we're talking about the mm. height of that hysteria. Well, I went to uh, high school and, and in the late 80s. I, certainly not when I was a teacher. Did we ever, ever, uh, were we ever uh, uh, issued any sort of things um, other than if a student of yours well, says, hey, um, I'm having this problem, to refer them to, you know, the school nurse, to the uh, the mechanism within that school that deals with those kind of things, social workers, et cetera, et cetera. Well, Mike, but but, but this is a very limited uh, opinion that you have. I, I was in high school a little after you. I graduated 1989, and we didn't have a D.A.R.E. class at all. So I could take your stance, which is to say I don't believe D.A.R.E. class exists because— I didn't have it in high school. Well, isn't it possible, Mike, that things have actually gotten more invasive and intrusive over time? I understand that you're saying that the war on drugs was what has, was at a certain height back in the 80s, but it hasn't let off. And uh, is, isn't it possible that things could be different today? 
no, it, it definitely is. But I think it's just a little bit, a little bit hysterical to uh, to to posit that uh, that that's actually um, you know a, a tactic. That well, it's in the news. I mean, it, it's it's been in the news more it, than it, once. Do you know it, in Mississippi well, they're sending like, kids to jail for writing on their desks, Mike? Well, that's Mississippi for you. Yes, but Mississippi's of, in America. I don't things about Mississippi. Well, you can say whatever you want. Texas, they're doing it too. Um, you know, this is America, there and this issue is nationwide. Of they do a lot right. of they're all stupid stuff. down there. I got you. Whatever your bigotry might be. The fact is this is something the whole nation needs to deal with. Right. Thanks for the call, Mike. 855 450 free. Just to recap here, I, you know, it didn't take me long. A quick... Uh, Google search for Dare Class Snitch on Parents, uh, October 18th, 2010, just four years ago. Story from LAWeekly.com. It's talking about Dare Class here and how it's made snitches out of children who have been taught by cops to turn in their parents. That's what happened in North Carolina, uh, Matthews, North Carolina. It's a suburb of Charlotte where an 11-year-old elementary school kid brought in a few joints to campus and turned them in, saying they belonged to mom and dad. This, of course, was after the good officers at DARE, Drug Abuse Resistance Education, came to school to give their anti-drug lecture. Matthews police officer Stason Tyrell told WBTV the fifth grader did the right thing. Quote, even if it's happening in their own home with their own parents, they understand that's a dangerous situation because of what we're teaching them. That's what they're told to do, to make us aware. That's what they're told to do, to make us aware. That is what this the officer This doesn't happen. Said. What are you talking about? That, I was in high school. It didn't happen to me. That is what the officer said there, and that was in North Carolina. The dad, age 40, and the mom, age 38, were? Um, po- I don't know. Black pod smokers? Arrested on <laughs> suspicion of marijuana possession and possession of drug paraphernalia, both misdemeanors. Dad, whose name was withheld by the television station, told WBTV, quote, it's no one's business how the 11-year-old got a hold of the joints and that, quote, I don't give drugs to my kids, unquote. Dare, of course, has been widely criticized as ineffective, a product of the Just Say No 80s, but the L.A.-based proselytizers carry on as if Nancy Reagan is still the first lady. What's ironic is that had this case happened in Dare's hometown, the parents may very well could have had a prescription for their weed and the cops might have had to lay off. So there's yet, you know, and that's not the only story. I'm pretty sure there's more than one example of this where here, you know, you could have had this officer, this officer, what he says is the real indictment here in this article, because had that officer not made that statement, you could have made the argument that, oh, well, you know, that kid wasn't told to turn in his parents. He just thought of it on his own. He went to dare class. They taught him that drugs were bad and he figured, you know, the cops would need to know about it. But no, this officer makes it very clear. They tell them, they tell the students to make them aware about their parents' drug use. So maybe things have gotten worse since the 1980s. Your thoughts are welcome. Michael is with us listening in Virginia Beach to WNIS. Michael, you're on Free Talk Live. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, The problem's a lot worse than uh, you're letting on here. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, case of, uh, a child that turned in, uh, her dad for marijuana, and then she ended up getting killed by the foster parents. No, in this case, the that, father was busted in some other manner for marijuana, and the child was quite young, uh, you know, maybe a toddler, certainly y- younger than two, and, uh, the foster parent, uh, killed her, so she couldn't have snitched. Well, uh, this is this is very minor that you're talking about uh, because the problem is huge. Uh, there have been thousands of cases like this. <clears throat> you mean of foster parents not, abusing their uh, their wards? Well, every time a father loses his children to divorce, and uh, the uh, the the live-in boyfriend becomes the new foster parent, we have a lot of kids killed that way, in addition to being sexually abused Hmm. by the live-in boyfriend. Well, certainly those numbers are higher. There's no doubt about it. But it's kind of a difficult conundrum, though. What do you do? You tell the the moms that they can't date now that they've gotten a divorce? 
Well, no, you you tell the government that they can't make slaves out of the American male. How do they do that? Okay. What specifically do well, they do? You don't, you don't give them the right to take their children away from them. Well, like uh, a lot of guys. <laughs> Once you start splitting up households, where, do this, where does the kid go? I mean, admittedly, women tend to get the kids far more than uh, 50% of the time. There's no doubt about it. It's something like 90% of the time. But the reason, a lot of guys don't want the kids. The reason we are suffering attacks from these ISIS-type groups that are rising up everywhere is because they see our style of child kidnapping coming to their community in the name of democracy, and they don't want it. This sounds like a stretch to me. Uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure the reason why uh, terrorism happens in a lot of cases is because the U.S. government's meddling and bombing people in the Middle East. But thanks, Michael, for the call. The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. I want there's to hear a, from there's some... religious extremism involved, too. Yeah, I want to hear from somebody who supports snitching. I There's got to be somebody out there, because... So far, we've just had a snitch denier. Right. Like this, this does not happen. Right. That would never happen in our schools. We would. Well, maybe he wouldn't. Maybe do not it, in but, Madison. Yeah. Well, again, he was only talking about in the 1980s. Not in Madison in, in, the, in the mid decade. 80s. <laughs> he hasn't been in a school in Madison in the last decade. So, you know, we've got evidence that shows the police are encouraging uh, kids in dare class to snitch on their own parents, and then their parents get arrested. Kids get taken from those parents, put in foster homes where they could be abused, maybe even killed. Toll free number 855 450 free. But, you know, anything in the name of stopping drug use, right? I know you drug warriors are out there. Would love to hear from you. 855 450 free. Coming up, some drug related news uh, with the DEA raiding some marijuana dispensaries. Majid lives in Nor Devin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, October 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.20 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,231 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $347. 
Antiwar.com reports a major crackdown in the Israeli-occupied West Bank saw troops shoot and kill 14-year-old Palestinian-American Orwa Abed El Wahan Hamad Wahab, who Israeli officials say was among a group of teens throwing rocks near the Palestinian city of Ramallah. Hamad was born in New Orleans, and his family moved back to the West Bank when he was six. The U.S. State Department urged a speedy and transparent investigation. He was the only Palestinian killed yesterday, and Israeli soldiers accused him of planning to throw a Molotov cocktail at traffic, endangering lives. Twelve other Palestinians were wounded. A number of Israeli officials were calling for troops to increase their use of force in a violent crackdown against Palestinian unrest. Israeli troops killing Palestinian teens rarely involves a significant public investigation, though the fact that this particular teen was a U.S. citizen could make the incident more difficult to sweep under the rug. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. UPI reports Amnesty International released a report Friday detailing a host of human rights violations committed by law enforcement in Ferguson, Missouri against protesters and journalists during the demonstrations that occurred in the wake of Mike Brown's fatal shooting by Officer Darren Wilson. The 23-page report offers first-hand accounts of abuse as documented by the organization's observers as well as recommendations from the International Human Rights Group on what actions state and local governments can take to prevent future violations, bringing U.S. law and policy up to date with international standards. In a press release announcing the report, Stephen W. Hawkins, executive director of Amnesty International USA, said, What Amnesty International witnessed in Missouri on the ground this summer underscored that human rights abuses do not just happen across borders and oceans. No matter where you live in the world, everyone is entitled to the same basic rights as a human being, and one of those rights is the freedom to peacefully protest. The report the report catalogs a long list of human rights violations including unlawfully dispersing crowds and implementing curfews and keep walking policies that violate citizens' rights to peacefully assemble and move freely in a public space. It goes on to chronicle further abuses including the use of non-lethal but still fatal ammunition, tear gas, and acoustic cannons on unarmed crowds. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot dot com. Reuters reports Fannie Mae has reached a $170 million settlement of a lawsuit accusing it of misleading shareholders about its finances, risk management, and mortgage exposure before it was seized by the U.S. government during the 2008 financial crisis. The settlement, which requires court approval, was disclosed in a Friday filing with the U.S. District Court in Manhattan. It resolved shareholders' allegations that Fannie Mae defrauded shareholders and inflated its stock by issuing false and misleading statements about its internal controls capitalization, accounting, and exposure to subprime and low documentation, Alt-A mortgages. The settlement allocates $123.8 million to common stockholders and $46.2 million to preferred stockholders between November 8, 2006 and September 5, 2008. Fannie Mae's market value peaked during that time at more than $600 billion. It is now worth $2.71 billion. The government seized Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac on September 7, 2008 and put them under the Federal Housing Finance Agency, where they remain. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac together drew about $187.5 billion worth of bailout funds and have allegedly returned $218.7 billion to taxpayers in the form of dividends. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Good morning. Later this afternoon, I will be engaging in an extramarital affair. Of course, I will wish that I had never made the horrible mistake I'm about to spend several hours making, but sadly, I'm currently too blinded by greed and lust to care about or consider the consequences of my actions. The liaison I will be taking part in shortly with two poor deaf teenage runaways 
is in direct opposition to the values you elected me to uphold. I also wish to apologize to my wife, Linda, to my two beautiful children, Allison and Christopher. It hurts me more than you will ever know that this scandal will impact your life so terribly. I can only pray that the revelations you will soon hear concerning my fetishes, physical flexibility, and penis will not scar you to the point of dementia. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get to the hotel immediately, so I will not be taking questions. Thank you. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here. Bring up anything you want. 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, it's Ian here. And Mark. We, for those of you just tuning in, have been talking about a disturbing story out of Utah, which may or may not have been orchestrated from higher levels. That's up to you to speculate on. I find it believable that it could have been. The school is saying it was not. What happened was a health teacher sent students home to inventory their parents' medicine cabinets Bring back the details. What medicines are in there? Whose medicines are they? When do they expire? That kind of information. The school saying they didn't know. They're sorry. They don't support what this teacher did. Um, however, even if you believe that this was an innocent mistake on the part of a, you know, just a genuinely curious health teacher who wasn't planning on turning the information over to the police, uh, then still there's real stories that we can absolutely verify from D.A.R.E. class, which show these D.A.R.E. officers encouraging students to turn their own parents in if they're marijuana users, among other drugs. Those stories are absolutely real, which is why I believe that this original this story out of Utah of the junior high school students being asked to go home and turn over information about what's in their medicine cabinets, I think it may not have been an accident or an oops. But there's more here because, Mark, we got into a discussion in the last hour where you read some sort of uh, opinion piece that suggested that possession of one's own prescription medication when that medication has expired is not illegal. You did point out correctly that was a legal opinion. So I have another legal opinion here that uh, that I would like to share. You get uh, uh, you get five lawyers in a room, you'll get seven legal opinions. Yeah, so here's uh, this is from a lawyer's website, Edmund Folsom. He's an attorney in Maine. And now he's looking here at Maine statutes. Okay, so what he's saying applies to his opinion about Maine's drug laws. Just to be clear, a lot of statutes you'll find it's kind of boilerplate. A lot of there's a lot of similarities between criminal statutes in different places. So this may or may not apply in the area where you live. Maybe it'll be more strict where you live. Maybe it'll be less strict. And again, maybe Mr. Folsom is wrong in his interpretation here. But again, it's always opinions when lawyers tell you something. And even when judges say something, uh, it's an opinion as well. I mean, that's why the Supreme Court can reverse itself and make changes to their opinions. But I just thought this was interesting. So he says that prescription drugs are scheduled drugs and main law prohibits the possession of something that is a scheduled drug, quote, intentionally or knowingly possessing what one knows or believes to be a scheduled drug, which is in fact a scheduled drug. Well, all prescription drugs are scheduled. So anyone who receives a filled prescription meets the above definition. The only reason that every person who picks up their own prescription medication isn't immediately guilty of this unlawful possession is because the law has exceptions for possession of scheduled drugs under certain authorized circumstances. Interrupt me here if you're not following. I got you. Uh, that's right. Possession of your own prescription drugs is illegal unless you're careful to possess them only in certain circumstances. Well, what are those circumstances, you might be that asking? That would be important. A person is not authorized to possess his or her own prescription drug unless the drug is, quote, in the container in which it was delivered by the person selling or dispensing the drugs. Which means that everybody who has those Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, just just the letters on them, S, uh, M, T, W, T. To help you organize and know when you've actually taken your pills. Because yeah. if you, you know, you could go through your day and not remember, oh crap, did I take my pills earlier today? I remember us reading this something like this in the past, where essentially somebody got in trouble for having their pills and exactly something like that. Yep. Because how can the copper decide whether or not what you've got is legal or illegal when it's in one of those containers? He can't. Uh, so And remember... You know, well, this, it used to be you're innocent until proven guilty, but I'm sorry, we don't do that anymore. So, I, I mean, it's true. 
what you're talking about, Mark, having one of those prescription pill organizing things, which are so common. Oh, yeah. Totally illegal if you're putting any kind of prescription pill. Any kind, not just narcotics. Not just like, you know, the ones that'll get you high, but any prescription pill outside of its original, original jar. Criminal offense. Well, it's all to protect the children, of course. This is our war on drugs. We need to make sure the kids don't get their hands. I mean, it's just ridiculous, these rules. But there's more. That's just the first point. There's only one circumstance in which a person is authorized to possess his or her own prescription drug outside of its original container, and that is when the drug is in use. As soon as the prescription drug is removed from its original pill bottle, the person who possesses it commits a crime unless the drug is, at that point, in use. Now, obviously, if a person takes a pill directly from the bottle and swallows it, the drug is in use during that process. But what if the person's supposed to take a pill every four hours and doesn't want to carry the pill bottle around? What if the person puts a couple of pills in his or her pocket before heading off to work? These aren't uncommon things. The pertinent statute, uh, statute says a drug may be considered in use when it has been placed in reasonable re- Repackaging for more convenient, legitimate medical use, but placing well, that a sounds pill- like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday thing. But placing a pill in a pocket doesn't involve repackaging, so the person would arguably commit unlawful possession while the drug is in his or her pocket. There is an affirmative defense available to some who are prosecuted for possessing their own prescription drug in unauthorized circumstances, but to successfully use the defense, the person must prove by a preponderance of the evidence that he or she possessed a valid prescription for the drug and at all times intended the drug to be used only for legitimate medical use in conformity with the instructions provided by the prescription and dispenser. Don't scoff at the possibility that the person could be charged for carrying his or her own prescription medications loose in a pocket. There is at least one prosecutorial district in Maine where at least one assistant district attorney will not hesitate to bring a charge against a person for that conduct. In September of 2012, a story appeared in the Bangor Daily News about a man who was prosecuted for possessing a single oxycodone pill in his home outside of the pill's original container. Although the defendant had a prescription for the medication, the expiration date had passed. The Superior Court Justice, hearing the case, questioned whether a person could be guilty of possessing a drug that was prescribed to him. The Bangor Daily News quoted the assistant district attorney handling the case as claiming he personally had prosecuted, quote, hundreds, unquote, of similar cases. The assistant, so don't think this can't happen to you or your grandma. And apparently it can't just happen in the South either, Mike. The assistant district attorney operates on the theory that if your prescription was expired on the date of the alleged conduct, you no longer possessed a valid prescription at that time and therefore cannot avail yourself of that affirmative defense. So I'd be real careful telling anybody that uh, possession of a prescription medication after it has expired is legal. It may not be, depending on the interpretation of your local district attorney's office. And the thing I'd like to point out judge. is when a district attorney or a judge, most in most cases it doesn't matter what judges and juries think because it's far fewer than 1% of cases of arrests are going to end up in trial. The, va- the fact is the vast majority of them end up in plea bargains or they're just dismissed entirely. But it, trials are very rare. So what judges think re- really just doesn't matter that much. But, um, you know, these prosecutors, they don't pay the price. If mm-hmm. I was a prosecutor and I decide, you know, having that vitamin C tablet, that's a problem. I'm going to charge you with that. The cha- What's going to happen to me? Well, Mark, you could overdose on that vitamin C. I mean, they're just trying to protect you here. The, the, you have to pay all kinds of money to defend yourself. I've got to pay nothing to prosecute you. It's yeah. my job. So the prosecution costs the state nothing and benefits the state actors through promotions. Lots of these prosecutors end up going on to attorney general and other elected offices. Um, it, costs, it, you know, it costs them nothing. They benefit. It's a it's a lawyer industrial complex, now, and look, you are the fuel. I don't know, Mark, if reasonable repackaging would be considered the little multi-day thing that you were talking about. I don't about. want to trust them anyway. Yeah, I don't know what reasonable repackaging is, but it's interesting. At the end of his story, he points out that in, the, uh, in Maine, the law on possessing one's own prescription drug was at one point even more stringent. So it's actually been somewhat decriminalized. There was a time when possession of a prescription drug was only authorized if the drug was in its original container without any exception for reasonable repackaging for a more convenient medical use. So again, 
Your mileage may vary. Even in Maine, the laws have changed over the years. Just because this is illegal in Maine or is legal in Maine, depending on how you interpret the statutes, doesn't mean that it'll be the same way in New York or California or Illinois or Ohio or wherever. So yeah, this is a crazy area of the law where all kinds of innocent, peaceful people are being rounded up and put into prison cells for not harming anybody else, just having some prescription medication, whether it was theirs or someone else's. The only solution here to end this madness is to legalize all prescription drugs. It's Free Talk Live. You take control. America was built by people with a few dollars and a dream. And while many don't know it, there's one path to success that still only requires a dream and about $10. That's right. If your dream is to start or grow your business, something as simple as the right business card could make all the difference. And today at Vistaprint.com, you can get 500 full-color business cards for only $9.99. That's right. Only $9.99. Just go to Vistaprint.com and enter promo code 8989 at checkout. That's Vistaprint.com, promo code 8989. Are you searching for your soulmate someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the nsa stop searching with easy dns you found a keeper easy dns does it all domain names web hosting and managed wordpress hosting easy dns stands up for your internet freedom and with servers in canada they do not cooperate with the nsa go to easydns.com you'll love their services or get a full refund they guarantee it and they accept bitcoin that's easydns.com Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. When commercials come on, don't push the button. Instead, listen. Even if you don't sell things for a living, you're still selling in the various conversations and transactions that make up your busy day. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important, especially if you're a job seeker. So take a lesson from Madison Avenue. Often the fewer words, the more effective the message. Like Jiffy Lube, where you never need an appointment, or the Office Max ad that says, you supply the ambition, we supply everything else. How about online ticket broker StubHub.com, the way in when it's sold out, or CyberCupidMatch.com's seductive, go ahead, it's okay to look. How cleverly and succinctly can you distill your message? For more tips, hit SurvivalSpeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. This 
is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online at freetalklive.com. And is privacy dead? Well, not if you have anything to say about it. On November 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers, a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or join them in person in New York City to create tools that make the web a more transparent place or help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community. Winners will receive a prize package including the all-new Black Phone, a secure by design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free. Registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. That is hackthetrackers.com. So we've got other drug-related stories here tonight. Mark, you brought in a story about some students in a junior high school who were asked to go and inventory their parents' medicine cabinets. The school is saying, whoa, we didn't know that. We would oppose that. We don't support what our teacher did there. How dare she? Well, are they being uh, genuine, or are they really just covering because they were requested to do that by the Department of Homeland Security or the local police department? I don't like wild speculation, but... Uh, I don't consider it wild because we know that D.A.R.E. class uh, teachers have absolutely encouraged uh, the students to turn in their parents. There are reports in the news about that over the past few years, so it wouldn't surprise me at all whether that were true. And still looking for somebody who's a supporter of the war on drugs, somebody who thinks that it should be illegal to give somebody another, uh, like, you know, if you've got a problem and you know that your family member has a certain prescription medication that would help you with that problem, let's say it's a little bit of pain and you don't really want to go to the doctor and get your own pain prescription, but you know somebody's got an extra hydrocodone. Now, look, I don't necessarily, I'm not a huge fan of uh, these opiates for pain uh, management, but some people like them. So let's say you want to get one of those from your friend or family member. I don't think that should be a... I don't think it should be a crime. I think people I think you own your own body. I think that you know you should decide what things you put inside your body. You should be able to get as much advice from experts and friends or you know professionals as you would like before somehow, you make that decision. Somehow our great great grandparents figured out how to use opiates and laudanum and these kind of things and to to not that much Ill, of an ill effect frankly. Uh, mostly these things got uh, were made illegal because uh, Chinaman laws, uh, yellow man mm-hmm. laws in the, the 1880s and 1890s. Uh, you know, many times, if you look at the history of the war on drugs, you'll find marijuana's made illegal because of blacks Black and people. Mexicans. Yep. Um, you'll find, <laughs> you'll find cocaine was made illegal because, whoa, we can't have the black guys snorting this stuff. They'll forget their place. And this is this is really the history of the war on drugs. And I think it's very important. When people talk about equality and they're not willing to talk about the war on drugs, the new Jim Crow, when you take a look at convictions when it comes to the war on drugs, if you're not willing to talk about the war on drugs and you want to talk about equality, I don't take you seriously. Like, there's nothing to talk about. So if you're a drug warrior and you want to continue this madness of locking peaceful people up who've never harmed anybody else, I sure would love to hear from you, although I don't expect to. 855-450 free. Let's go to Lee Hand in Iowa. You're on Free Talk Live. Lee Hand? Yes. You're on the air. Go ahead. I would like to, I'd like to say that instead of snitching on somebody to lock them up, I think they could snitch in somebody to get them a job and get paid for it, like a reward. And that would mean that they could pay restitution, they continue to work. It's a little hard to understand. It sounds like you may have a speech impediment. I'm not sure, but uh, you're saying people people should snitch to get a job? I misunderstood what you said. One more time. Yes. uh, Instead of snitching and getting paid to get somebody locked up, they should snitch get paid to get somebody's job. That way they can pay restitution instead of uh, having dead time where they won't To whom would they pay restitution? Um, uh, some kind of uh, money to show that uh, you committed a crime or whatever, 
Why would you uh, want someone to snitch on another person who hasn't harmed anyone else? Look, we're not talking about snitching on someone who committed murder here. That, I don't think, is a problem. Right. I don't consider right. that to be snitching. Uh, that's you're going after somebody who's a valid criminal. But uh, if you're snitching on somebody for possession of a, of a firearm or possession of a drug or something like that, then you're the one who becomes the aggressor. And I would not recommend it that uh, anybody participate in snitching. It turns uh, neighbors against neighbors. It turns family against family. And it just destroys relationships and it destroys community. And I thank you, Leehan, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Mark, I uh, released some video footage to the Internet from last weekend's Pumpkin Fest riots. Uh, which had, you know... We're right here in Keene, New Hampshire, the That's home of the only white riot I've ever heard of. I don't know about that, Mark. That's an excellent, excellent Maybe question. Maybe in the U.S. Yeah, there's, I was going to say, there's some sco- soccer hooligans in the U.K. Yeah. who've done some rioting. And there's certainly been plenty of uh, riots after sports games and things like that in the U.S. Uh, that I don't know if it's if those are considered white riots or not, but if they're majority white, is it is it a white riot? I, I don't know. know. Well, anyway, it just kind of amuses me. Yeah, so there were some riots. Really, here what have you got Keene. to riot about? There were some <laughs> riots here in Keene uh, last week. Uh, actually, uh, one week ago on Saturday night last week, and uh, and I was out during the day. I recorded video footage of people throwing bottles, uh, full bottles of beer at one another, among other things. And you know, these this is a dangerous thing to do. This was an incredibly dangerous uh, bottle war, if you want to use a. Uh, that term for it's a it. terrible waste of alcohol. And I, uh, as I was recording this, you know, I realized that there was a good chance the police would use this footage to, you know, make arrests. And I went ahead and did it anyway because I think those people are doing something that's aggressive. I think the people throwing bottles are putting other humans in danger. And You're a newsman. Um, no one gives anybody trouble. Uh, no, no one gives any trouble to a, a journalist that goes. Up around the world and takes pictures of things that are going on in foreign countries, wars yeah. and conflicts. Why in the world would they give you trouble here? I think that that I think what you've done is a community service. Yeah, well, I actually went a little further after I saw the Keene police had taken still f- frames from my video. I went down and I gave them the uh, the raw files. I gave them the you know unedited 1080p raw files from that particular occurrence. And I figured that might upset some people, and it did. You know, some people got upset about that. There's some people who hate the police so much that they will do nothing whatsoever to help them. And then there was also the argument that the police aren't the most compassionate way to deal with uh, situations, and I agree with that. But unfortunately, they're the only way that we have of dealing with violence against other human beings. And so to... Yeah, I'd want to know who flipped my car over, especially if I didn't have car insurance uh, to cover something like that. I mean, that's a... That's a really terrible thing to do to so somebody. If we're talk- Just because you've drank too much alcohol, you've come across the state to have a big fat party and, right. woo, bah, F the police. Yeah, like, screw that. If we're talking about crimes that involve victims, then I don't mind helping the police. I really don't. I don't think they're, I don't think the police are necessarily evil. I think they're humans and they've been doing a job that has them doing wrong things. That by part of doing their job, they're doing evil. They themselves, I think they're doing. They think they're doing the right thing, and uh, when they're doing the wrong thing, I will let them know. Hey, stop arresting those people for possession of cannabis. Stop arresting those college students for open container for underage drinking. They don't need to be spending their time on that. Investigating real crimes, that's not a problem. I don't consider that snitching. You, what do you think? Hi, folks. Ronnie McMullen here for Life Change Tea. Healthcare is a problem, whether you're for or against Obamacare. It's a mess. My question is, who do you trust? Do you want to be told what to do, or do you want to make your own decision? My opinion, preventative maintenance. Keeping your colon clean is preventative maintenance. A little exercise, a balanced diet, and drinking Life Change Tea. It tastes great, and it helps with constipation, high cholesterol, liver problems, acid reflux, and much, much more. And with the holiday season upon us, you can get some extra tea for free. Don't wait for Obama. Make your own decision. Order now. Call us at 928-308-0408. That's 928-308-0408. Or you can log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Ridding yourself of harmful toxins is truly preventative maintenance. Getthetea.com. 
Free Talk Live. You guys live in a dream world. No, sir, you're the one that lives in a dream world. You're the one that wants to have a police state in America where you get to determine who can come in and who can't. You want to have you border patrols. You want to have checkpoints. This, you want to let the entire third world into this country? Sir, let me get, let, I'll answer that question by reading a short excerpt from a poem. Maybe you've heard of it. It happens to appear at the bottom of the Statue of Liberty. It was yeah, about... You're poor, you're tired, tired, huddled masses. Right. right. You are yeah, aware of it, yes. Let them come in legally. Legally. Well, okay, come on, legally, <laughs> Lou. The legal is such a cop out. No, hold on a second, because when your ancestors came across, and I don't know what they are, let's say they're Italian. When your ancestors came across, all they did was take you to Ellis Island, screw up your last name, sit you around for three days, and then bam, you're out the door. Now legal is a huge pile of paperwork and tens of thousands of dollars. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Are you drinking too much and it's destroying your life? If you're ready to quit drinking, we have a real solution for you that can help you quit drinking within hours. That's right. We can help you quit drinking within hours. It's not magic. It's medical science. At Sober Time, we'll show you how this simple 20-minute outpatient medical procedure will turn off your cravings within hours. Let's face it. If you don't crave a drink, you're not going to drink. And if you don't drink, you won't get drunk. The medication is FDA approved and covered by most major insurance plans. So if you're really ready to stop drinking and get your life back, call Sober Time now for a free consultation. Patients have nearly an 85% success rate. So here's the number. Call right now. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. 800-659-0267. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free and bring up what you want. Doesn't have to necessarily be about this insane war on drugs that is turning neighbor against neighbor, that is turning friend against friend, that is turning kids against their own parents. You're welcome to comment on anything here. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Do you have a will? Is your will written out? Is it up to date? If it's not, you need to go to LegalZoom.com. They make it entirely inexpensive, very easy to get a will. Um, you, they also have these living trusts, living wills, all the things that you need, leases, deed transfers, copyrights, name changes, prenuptial agreements, powers of attorney, pet protection, divorce, immigration, all just all kinds of things uh, that you need uh, for legal documents. And they've got them. Now, they're not lawyers, but that was created by attorneys. And I have done my will over there. And what this does is this prevents you from having to deal with all kinds of problems. If you don't have a will, you're giving your money to the government, and then they can decide how much your heirs get. It's LegalZoom.com. Use coupon code FTL. You'll save 10 bucks on your order. It's well worth it. LegalZoom.com. Coupon code FTL. All right, let's go to your phone calls and thoughts. We've got Andy on the line in Madison listening to the Mike 92.1. Hey, Andy. Uh, hey, guys. How's it going? Good. You're on the air. Go ahead. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to call and, and talk a little bit about the, the drug law stuff. Um, so I will preface this. I'm not a supporter of our war on drugs. I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. 
Um, I'm also a, uh, a convicted drug felon, uh, in the state of Wisconsin. Mm. And, um, I guess fortunately or unfortunately, uh, due to that, I am also now finally a recovered drug addict, um, a couple years sober now as kind of a result of my, my doings in the past. Um, but I'm also a certified pharmacy technician and in terms of, uh, what you guys were talking about a couple minutes ago with, you know, being able to, you know, help out a family member or a friend, you know, with a prescription here and there. Um, I, I understand the, the point you were trying to make about, you know, how it is our own body and we're obviously free to do, you know, whatever, uh, positive or, or negative, uh, you should be free, want, but you're not but, free. Well, yeah, you should be. But, you know, the, the one thing I just wanted to bring up was that, you know, your your aunt or cousin or your neighbor may or may not know, you know, what other prescriptions or, or illicit drugs you might be on. Mm -hmm. They might not know all of your drug allergies, you know, possible interactions. You know, I mean, things could get dangerous complicated for you, you know? sure well you've yeah. got to know yeah. yourself right you've got to know what you're going to be taking i have a friend who uh, took some sort of <clears throat> some kind of birth control patch recently and i said hey do you know anything about this thing that you're putting on your body have you done any research uh, into this so yeah i mean if you if you're going to be taking uh, an oxycodone or hydrocodone or something like that and you don't know how that's going to interact with any other prescriptions you might be on or any other kind of you know if you how will it work with drinking or whatever sort of contraindicating uh, contraindicating factors then it you should be your responsibility i mean ultimately yes that's why having experts to, or at least purported experts, to go and visit and uh, get their opinion is a valuable thing. But I don't think that that should prohibit people from making that choice, right? Like, if somebody wants to make that choice, they should be free to do so. I should be free to go and buy some sort of medication that uh, is currently prescription. I should be able to buy that over the counter just like anything else because I shouldn't have to go and subject myself to this doctor monopoly, essentially, uh, because they restrict the the amount of doctors that you can have out there. Over-the-counter to... drugs can cause all kinds of problems, too. Exactly. So, oh, you know, oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And, and the large majority of people you know, have no clue you know, what, what exactly they're doing when they're mixing, you know, their their Dayquil with their blood pressure medicine with. I agree this, completely, that, but know. we we run into a very dangerous situation um, in this world when we decide to set the rules based on the dumbest among us. And mm. when you decide to do that, what you're doing is you're, <laughs> you're you, the bar has to keep getting lower, you know. Yeah. So I yeah. say buyer beware and uh, let people make their own decisions. Andy, anything else you want to share tonight? Um, no, thanks for, thanks for the call, the call and you know, keeping the conversation going. We will. That's thanks, what Andy. we do here best. Thanks for the call yep. tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Denny is listening in West Virginia to WVTS. Hey, Denny. Hey, guys. Um, just wanted to uh, talk to you about the war on drugs that you've been mentioning earlier. Yes, sir. Uh, I have two things to uh, say. First of all, I myself am in a similar situation. I was given medication. I actually have kidney stones. And I'm Oof. sure you all know that they're unbelievably ungodly painful. Uh, and I was given, and I, when I I showed up to the hospital thinking I had some kind of, you know, like maybe my uh, my appendix had ruptured. You know, mm. they said extreme pain and sickness. And I went to the emergency room over it. You know, they said, no, you've passed a kidney stone. And he gave uh. me a, just about a bucket of hydrocodones. And he said, he said, whenever you feel like you're about to pass another one, take one of these. And, and I thought, he, he's, he's given me maybe about, I'd say about 15 of them, right? Mm -hmm. So the doctor, the, hold on, the doctor himself yeah. handed them to you? Yeah, he actually, okay. well, he wrote the prescription out and said, in case you ever are about to pass one, take one of these, it'll help you with the pain. Okay. I passed one not two weeks later, and I had to use one. Now, it's been about three years now, and I just have a, a bottle full of hydrocodone sitting in my medicine cabinet, unused. This may or may, may not be your real name. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, just I have no idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I mean, I'm just in that similar situation, which I can't really use it because I don't have a need to. It's been years since I have passed the kidney stone. Do you so. know uh, if it is illegal in West Virginia to possess expired prescription medications? 
Not that I'm aware of. I really it never even crossed my mind. Yeah. Well, just because you're not aware of it doesn't mean it's not <laughs> illegal, right? <laughs> right. They created yeah, this yeah. Uh, this maxim um, uh, probably 900 years ago about ignorance of the law being no excuse. And then what they did was pass so many laws, you'll never know what they could possibly be. The police, the prosecutors, they don't know what they all are. Yeah, that's, that's a scary about it because it never crossed my mind at all until I heard about this and I thought okay I gotta call in and and and, and see just to see exactly how bad the situation could yeah be. well that's the thing we don't know I mean there's different opinions out there about whether or not that would be considered illegal uh, to to have those some in the prosecutor's office would argue that it is uh, depending on state law and so you got to be really careful there and, and like you said you know you had no idea and so hopefully we've done the community a service here tonight on Free Talk Live. Thanks, Denny, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number 855-453. We've got Daniel in Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Daniel. Hey, how you guys doing? Great. Um, Go ahead. Listen, l- let, me, let me ask you, are you actually saying that oxycodone and, and methamphetamines should be over-the-counter drugs that anyone could just walk in and buy? Absolutely. That's well, freedom, baby. I'd point out that methamphetamines, oh. uh, before you go on, I'd point out that methamphetamines is a result of the war on drugs. Um, not, you know, I mean, this thing didn't exist uh, prior to that. That's, a lot of t- that's uh, got to be the most ridiculous thing I've ever So it's, why? it's all right for somebody because you're talking about uh, making laws for the dumber among us. It's the smarter among us that become dumb once they start doing what they think is smart, like making money on people that don't know what they're getting themselves into. If you're going to sell, I, I'm I'm a big fan of, of legalizing marijuana. Uh, it's far more risk. It, it's far less risky than alcohol is. I'd agree. In most cases. Okay. And and I I believe the war on drug for marijuana is ridiculous. If you're going to say it's it's it, it should be legal to make crack. Then you might as well say it's illegal. It's legal to go ahead and sell oxycodone over the counter. Yeah, it should be legal to do it. those things. Well, Why I would say it be? The, the, people, illegality people of, the illegality of the illegality of cocaine people, caused the creation of crack. But you got to understand, smart people think that they are smarter than everybody else. Therefore, taking three oxycodones and going out to the bar would be a, a, an all right thing for them to do, and it's not. And if it, once it starts trickling down into the hands of kids who then become addicted, who then become our, our future, pretty much. You, you know, know that you can buy, just to clarify something, Daniel, selling. I'm glad you called tonight. I would like you to hang on so we can continue this discussion. Uh, okay. I want you to know, though, that you can already buy oxycodones on the black market. You can pay $20 a pill for those, and people do, and that's why lots of people get robbed in order to uh, pay, you know, to have the person be able to acquire the drugs they're looking for. More coming up, Free Talk Live. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just $19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV 
Say goodbye to the cable guy. Cut costs and get more. 1-855-905-MY-TV. 1-855-905-MY-TV. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts. Just dial in toll free at 855-450 free. And if you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support what we're doing here, please become a Free Talk Live amplifier. You can go to amp.freetalklive.com and get signed up there for as little as $5 per month. If you like what we're doing, you can help us get on more radio stations. We've got over 160 great AM and FM radio stations from coast to coast and beyond that are carrying the show today. But we could have 300, 400, 500. That's all possible. It just takes money to market the program to those radio stations and their program directors. We can also bring more internet listeners on board. We can expand our satellite footprint around the globe with free-to-air satellite coverage. So those are all things we can do with your 5 bucks a month. And you get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only podcast amp only facebook group and more go get the details get signed up please makes a big difference for us when you do it at amp.freetalklive.com that's amp.freetalklive.com we go back to uh daniel in virginia now daniel you're the first caller tonight who has been in favor of the war on drugs however you did clarify no, you no, think no, 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 marijuana no, no. I, should be legal in favor of I'm not a favor in favor of the war on drugs. I think it's a it's a huge waste of time and money, really resources for this country that could be going to a lot of other things. I'm sorry, I thought you to... had said earlier that you thought it should be illegal for people to uh, to purchase prescription drugs without you know a prescription. That's that's not a war on drugs, guys. Oh yeah, you, it is. You, you got to remember, you know, when you're people getting, are going to prison for tw- for decades. Hold on, hold on. When you're getting high powered addictive, severely addictive drugs into the hands of people that, that can't handle it, that's, that's not a war on drugs. That's, that's common sense. Uh, if, if we didn't have rules, we'd still all be swinging in trees, flinging feces at each other. We, there has to be some, some form of, of guidance from, our, from the people that know better well, to the people that whoa. don't. You think if politicians? Wait a minute. You think politicians know more than you? Oh, hell no. No, 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 no. What no. kind See, of guidance I, are you looking I, I for? I think I run my life, okay? I decide what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I'm an adult. I'm 52 years old. Right. I, I, I'm an adult. I make wise decisions to the best of my ability. A 16-year-old 
does not. So but if you saying, decide, so hold on. I mean, I just want to understand what you're saying. So you're saying that because you're in your 50s, you should be free to buy any medication you want without having a doctor's prescription, but a teenager no, should not? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because I don't want to get addicted to something that's going to, that's going to mess my life up. So okay? therefore, you should be punished if you go out and you buy, let's say a friend of yours uh, gives you so some prescription medication, drugs. you support going to, to you, prison for that. No, to you, recreational drugs and, 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 and over-the-counter drugs for serious medical conditions are the same thing. Uh, by the way, that, I just actually, like to clarify something for you. Rec the things you're calling recreational drugs, in many cases, can be used to cure things as severe as PTSD. There are studies on MDMA and psychedelic mushrooms that show very significantly that these things can help cure things like uh, like anxiety and PTSD. So I'm sorry, even though you can well, use some drugs for recreational purposes, uh, they're, that they're usually done with some kind of guidance. Some great. Kind of I'm fine with you getting you're, guidance, you're but put, Daniel. Just I, you're you're dodging what I'm saying Who's here. Give that sixteen-year-old kid guidance on taking oxycodone. His dealer. No, he's going to say it's going to make you feel good, kid. Here you go. Give me ten uh, bucks. Just so Here's you know, you can go and, and get oxycodones kid. right now today uh, on the black market for ten to twenty dollars. So they're already yeah, available to easily. teenagers. If what, if what you're talking about is making it real easy. In other words, anybody can get anything anywhere right now. That's that's not well, necessarily true. Okay, so there's a couple so, of and, things and that you're we talking about. Look, Hold look, on. the Just places one in... One more point, one more point. No, no, this point is really important. Places in Portugal, like Portugal and Amsterdam, where drugs are being uh, decriminalized, and I mean real hard drugs like we're talking about here. Well, I'm talking right now. I don't care right what they now. do in, Am in Amsterdam. I don't care what they do in Amsterdam. I'm telling I'm you that young people country. have... The, the use of these drugs has gone down. You're, you're trotting out a straw man here that the facts have, um, contradict. And here's what I, th I think you're not looking at. In this country... These laws are used to incarcer incarcerate people who are non-white at a significantly higher rate than those that are white. There is a real problem, a racial problem, with drug laws in this country. How do you propose hey, me, to handle me, that in your you. magic world where only the right people get drugs? So you're saying, but you were also saying that police are evil for taking alcohol away from, from minors. What? Yeah, absolutely. It's wrong to take somebody who's peaceful, who's not harming anybody else, and put them in a prison okay, cell. When, that when act is evil. When you did you just down. dodge everything I asked you? Yes, he did. Sorry? Did you dodge everything I asked you? No. What, did you, what was your question? I said in this country, non-whites are uh, incarcerated at a far greater rate than whites because of this war on drugs. How do you propose in this magic world where nobody gets the drugs they're not supposed to get that you propose that we don't do it in a racial manner? First of all, if, if you're talking about who's using the drugs and who's nope. not. I'm talking about who's getting arrested and who's getting put in prison. I have no clue who's using drugs and you don't either. Okay, so my job is I catch shoplifters for a living for a major retailer. All right. Okay. And should I should I should I not do that because uh, my town happens to be more more on the black side than on the white no, side? No, of course not. And Shoplifting is a crime with a victim, Daniel. Somebody taking an oxycodone hasn't victimized anyone. That's their own choice. It's their own body. If, if, if Why do you support if, putting people in jail for taking uh, taking drugs? Because it, it, drugs are meant for a reason. OK, it, it, you're, they made oxycodone to kill pain. Do you think that people's okay, lives will be improved pain. by going to jail? No. Well, why do no, you support it then? Not. But I'll tell you what, if, when I catch a shoplifter for the first time and they go to jail, more than likely they're not going to do it again. So okay, that's why you support it. You think, it, just so to be clear, addicted, you think that because right somebody gets you. caught by the system and put in jail that they'll stop using drugs? Oh, that, that's, the facts probably show that's not even close to being true. Right. So what's but the here's point? The, here's the point. If you're taking away somebody's chance of being successful in life, and if they're addicted to oxycodone, they're going to have a whole lot of hard times than somebody no that's, doubt. that's got a level head. Do you think thinks, that going to jail okay gives you. you a chance, a greater chance of being successful in life, Daniel? No, Do you think having a felony on your rap sheet gives you a greater way. chance of being um, successful in life? Right, 
man, you know what? You're starting to sound like oh, like an anarchist. Like you just want everybody to get off everybody's back and do it. Yeah, I want people want who do. haven't hurt anybody and else to be left alone by people like you, them. who, thank you for the call, who want to constantly meddle in other human beings' lives, and you believe you know what's right, so you're going to shove it down somebody's throat. Oh, what's that? You got caught with some prescription drugs? Well, you get to go to prison because somehow that's going to make your life better. When you get out of prison, you've got no home to go to because you haven't had your job since you can't pay rent. Uh, you can't pay rent. You lose your home. You've got no home after you get out of jail. So how's that going to help somebody with their drug addiction problem? Oh, yeah. By the way, you can get drugs in prison, too. Well, they find that uh, marijuana is easier for kids to get than alcohol. Um, at least I read that some. I don't I don't know now that they're legalizing marijuana if this is the case. But a few years ago, that was that was the situation. Um, you know, people get addicted to alcohol. That's going to be a real problem in your life if you're addicted to alcohol, getting uh, being successful, that kind of thing. Ban alcohol. Some people are ruining their lives on that drug. It's very hard drug. It's very dangerous. We should ban it, right, Mark? But, I mean, when you look at Portugal and Amsterdam and you see places that have decriminalized hard drugs, I'm not saying they've made them legal and made, uh, you know, what we're, we're talking about here. I, 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 I'm just saying that the fact is that young people are using them less there. Those are the facts. You well, can they're look. not using alcohol less, Mark. They're using alcohol like crazy. I, uh, here in uh, Keene, New Hampshire, they were tearing signposts out of the well, air. Shouldn't we ban alcohol? Why not? Well, the fact is, in Europe, it's a lot easier for young people to drink. And as, as I understand, there's no drinking age at all in Ireland. So there's many places in the civilized world where young people can drink as young as they want. Um, with families in, in Italy, you can drink wine fam- you know, right but there Mark, at the dinner table. But alcohol is dangerous. People get addicted to this drug. It kills people. Shouldn't sure it, it be illegal? Uh, I don't... I, the, the, I want to know whose business You are it is. dodging my question. Shouldn't alcohol be illegal? It is dangerous. Of course not. We've done that already. The, you know, <laughs> the Valentine's Day massacre was a terrible thing, and it happens on a weekly basis here in the United States with the current types of prohibition we have. Jason's in Virginia, listening to WLNI in the Lynchburg area. Hey, Jason. How are you doing? Good. You're um, on the air. A couple of things, actually. Um, I wasn't actually. I was going to change the subject and talk about something different, but I've heard the last couple of people, and it's kind of driving me crazy. All right. I'm with you 100% on the decriminalization of most of these drugs. Excellent. It was, I, I've always been taught that laws were designated to protect us from one another, not from ourselves. Hmm. We have every right in the world to be idiots, right? Everybody can be stupid. If somebody wants to go take care of them, let them. It could be good for population control. They're do doing think? it anyway. <laughs> right. They're going to do it. So let them do it. And see, in my opinion, too, this war on drugs is nothing but a new tax. You can, you can revenue... You can generate better revenue by penalizing people. Prisons, of course, are making money, ungodly amounts of money. That's oh, why yeah. our prisons are full. It's not, not because we're freaking criminals. It's because we have a very corrupt government system. It's because they've criminalized life. things that uh, are peaceful activity. Jason, thanks for the call. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. If Americans continue their reckless disregard of the U.S. Constitution, our freedoms and way of life may not continue. Original Intent, Spoiler, and Molan La Bay is a three-movie special that explains what we can do. From the director of Fiat Empire, this trio of movies features Ron Paul, Pat Buchanan, Edwin Vieira, and many others. On sale now at moviepubs.net. This is a mini library you don't want to be without. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. 
You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Gold is trading around $1,235, silver around $17.19, and Bitcoin is trading around $352.44. Today's precious metal prices are brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. And now, a Liberty Beat special report. A trial in Austin. I was grateful Antonio was there to take pictures of what was happening, because I feared for my safety. That testimony was shared Thursday by Norma Pizana during the first day of proceedings in the trial of Antonio Beeler. An Austin, Texas activist accused of refusing to obey a police officer after he stepped in to record and ultimately defend a woman when she was apparently being treated aggressively by police. Pizana is the female passenger who was ripped from her friend's car shortly before Beeler was arrested for resisting arrest and for allegedly spitting in the face of Officer Patrick Oborski. While those charges were ultimately no billed by a Travis County grand jury, they did indict Beeler on a Class C misdemeanor charge of failure to obey the order of an officer. The state is relying on the testimony of Oborski and Officer Robert Snyder, with Oborski testifying that Beeler was verbally aggressive and that he considered him a threat. The defense is attempting to demonstrate that the officers never had the proper authority to detain or handcuff Beeler and that it was the officers themselves that were the aggressors that early New Year's morning. To show the officers as the aggressors, the defense called Pizana to the stand. She told the jury that she called out to Beeler to video record the altercation because she was afraid of what the officers would do to her, saying that she had never been treated like that by a male. At the conclusion of the lengthy first day of the trial, Beeler told the Liberty Bean that he's pleased to see the truth coming to light. I'm really glad that people have been able to come out and tell the truth about what's happened after all these years, and I'm just hoping that the jury, that they're eager to make sure that justice is served. Today is day two in the trial, and it's set to begin with the defense's questioning of Officer Oborski, followed by testimony from an expert on police policies and procedures. Beeler will also take the stand. The Liberty Beat will be there in the courtroom. And for the continuing coverage, as well as the full report of Thursday's proceedings, go to thelibertybeat.com. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at mymagicmud.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelibertybeat. On Wednesday, a new lawsuit was filed against the Environmental Protection Agency for the agency's approval of a controversial herbicide from the Dow Chemical Company. The suit was brought forth by the Center for Food Safety and Earth Justice on behalf of a coalition of groups, including the Pesticide Action Network North America. The news comes just one week after approval was granted for the use of 2,4-D on genetically modified corn and soybean. A similar suit was filed on October 16th by the Natural Resources Defense Council. The Houston Police Officers Union has accused Democratic candidate for District Attorney Kim Ogg of illegally releasing the name of a juvenile victim of sexual assault. Union President Ray Hunt claims that Ogg released the name of the victim in a news release asking for leads while she was employed with Crime Stoppers of Houston. Ogg stated that no identity was released. She says a victim's name was mistakenly included on a draft script for the television program Predator Check but was not aired on television. Kim Ogg has made headlines in the DA race by promising to decriminalize cannabis in Harris County. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has released an updated version of the Surveillance Self-Defense Report, a guide to protecting yourself from spying while on the Internet. The report includes information on important security topics, guides to privacy software, 
and guides for activists and journalists. The report was first released in 2009. For more information, visit ssd.eff.org. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Well, you can. Just log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at libertybeat.com slash Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at thelibertybeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's The Onion Radio News. God loses his decision-making coin. This is Doyle Redland reporting. The Lord God has confirmed that he has misplaced his special decision-making coin. The coin, a relatively unremarkable 1972 nickel, has been used almost daily by the Supreme Being for over four billion years for the purpose of determining everything from the direction of the wind to the outcome of history. The visibly distraught God added, I have no idea where I put it. I remember flipping it last night for a couple in Monroe, Michigan, who were trying to conceive a child, but I haven't seen it since. God also said he hopes to locate the coin before 7.15 Thursday morning when United Flight 251 takes off from Seattle with actress Dixie Carter on board. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is The Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll continue with your calls here. For those of you just tuning in, it has been a war on drugs evening so far here on Free Talk Live. What sparked this discussion was, Mark, you bringing in a story from Utah about a health class teacher sending students home in a junior high school class to raid their parents' medicine cabinet to take notes about what medicines were there, whether they were expired, whose names were on the bottle, that kind of information, which sure to me seems like information that could be used to bring people up on felony charges. Uh, but this teacher in the school claims this was just an innocent mistake. They weren't being told to do this. It was just something that she came up with on her own. It's not like the police were involved in this, but they could have been. And I don't know what the real story is. You know, when a bureaucrat says something, it doesn't necessarily mean they're telling you the truth. Uh, but whatever the, regardless of what the real story is behind that one, we know that D.A.R.E. class officers have encouraged students in D.A.R.E. class to turn in their parents. We read, st we read that story, uh, story about that tonight. And it's happened more than once. And the police admit that. So we know this insane war on drugs has literally turned family member against family member. You know, you've got uh, rewards that people are given for not, for tips uh, leading to arrests, not just on the drug war, but also in the, the war on guns, the war on the ability to defend yourself in certain places. And I had suggested that really what we need to see is the ability for people to buy whatever drugs they want to without having to go to ask a doctor's permission to do so. Because not only am I in favor of legalizing or decriminalizing all uh, illegal drugs— but I would also like to see them decriminalized for possession of prescription medications as, as well. Well, a prescription really is sort of a unionized uh, protection racket, right? Like there's this yes. class of people who are able to do something that uh, the rest of us are not. They are given that b ability by the government. This is really, a, you know, it's sort of a, a fascinating thing. Yeah. I do think that you should you should check with a doctor before taking certain medications. No doubt about it. See whether or not this is a good idea for you. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. But uh, more people in this country are dying every year because of prescription medications that they take properly than because of illegal drugs that they have taken improperly. It's true. So we go and continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Dave listening in Panama City in Florida. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys, how are y'all tonight? Good. What's on your mind? Okay, well, you know, uh, I, I drove cabs in, in a lot of cities, and one of the major cities I was driving in uh, was uh, Fort Walton Beach. Well, that's kind of a major city, but I've driven in big cities, too. But I, I noticed one thing uh, that is so prevalent in all the cities is how the guy can stand on the corner and sell drugs, and the people who comes to buy them 
they're the ones who get arrested. So uh, a retired uh, deputy sheriff told me the reason for that is so that the that the uh, you you know the courts and, and all this stuff the uh, the judicial system you know they have to have uh, money coming in through that oh, yeah. so they can pay all the employees. And he said that. Well, it'd be like closing the candy store if they picked the guy up on the corner selling the drugs. So every time I hear that it's a war on drugs, no, it's a war on the citizens. It's a war on people. You're absolutely right about that, Dave, and uh, thanks for the call tonight. Uh, the war on drugs is a war on you, me, our family members, our friends, our co-workers, and our neighbors. That's all it is, and he's absolutely right. All you have to do is go and sit in any arraignment. Go and find out. Call your local uh, district court. Find out when their arraignment date is, and just go and sit in there for a morning. I know, you know, you'll have to take some time off, or if you got a day off from work that happens to coincide with an arraignment day, because they don't have these arraignments at convenient times for people. They have them when whatever the hell they want to have them, and you got to show up whether it's an inconvenience for you or not. But you sit in that arraignment, and you'll what you can just watch and just ring that cash register, start totaling up the amounts that they get fined with. I mean, almost everybody in that arraignment that appears in front of that judge is going to be there for drug possession alcohol possession, you know, some sort of victimless crime. Every now and then they'll bust a thief or they'll bust somebody for domestic violence or something like that. But uh, almost not, probably 95, 80 to 95 percent of the cases in any given uh, district court's arraignments are going to be victimless crimes. And you can just total them up, man. Thousands of dollars every single day is being extracted, mostly from poor people and mostly from, you know, so-called minorities. That's who these people are. These are the people who are getting victimized by this insane system. And it's supposed to be helping people. If you're worried about heroin um, and, and you know, that, that use among young people, go Google U.S. soldier poppy fields and look at the images of United States soldiers guarding poppy fields in Afghanistan. I mean— uh- it, 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 the United States government is, I'm sorry, neck deep in this. Oh, I've got the news here about that, Mark. We can get into it. The headline is they spent $7 billion but have failed to stop Afghan opium poppy growth. Maybe that's because they're standing there guarding it. Uh, we'll continue with your calls, though. Let's go to John listening in Wichita. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, John. Uh, hi there. Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, I wanted to kind of talk in regards to um, a few comments that were made earlier. Uh, the man who said uh, it's the smart people who are the ones that are going out and doing the most drugs, or the ones that are that are more prone to uh, take more of a certain drug, I, I'm just going to say flat out, I don't understand the logic in that. He, he seems to imply that uh, it's the smart ones that OD the most. Um, and I mean, I'm a, I'll say it, I'm a biochemist here in the, you know, conservative uh, anti-drug bastion that is Kansas. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, it's not the smart people. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's the people that don't know what they're doing and they're simply seeking the biggest high that they can. Yeah. And it becomes a, a grip about them that I need to get more and more high and that's when you get into trouble. So in that regard, I have I completely disagree. Yeah, um, I don't know what that guy was saying before. He was just a rambling drug warrior lunatic. Well, there was yeah. uh, there was an interesting study done that we ran read here on air, and it's probably been a year now. Um, but they gave drug addicts they took drug addicts in, oh, yeah, and they gave them the one. offer of getting a dose of drugs um, in this test. They gave them basically. Mm-hmm. Do you want a dose of drugs or do you want some money? It was meth and, and or crack. Meth or crack. And they yeah. essentially, the drug addicts, over and over again, would forego a dosage for like two hours or something like that. And this was of some like bomb crack. Yeah, this, this was, was the, like the best the medical crack, quality yeah. meth you could get. <laughs> they would forego a dose for 20 bucks. And what that says to me is, is that, you know, if your life is rewarding you with good things, because you're not doing drugs, like you know, you're if you're getting negative feedback, you're liable to you know do drugs. Now, I'm not saying well, that the world owes you positive feedback. I'm just saying that huh, it well, doesn't seem to me like p- successful people are going to be doing a whole bunch of drugs. Well, now I mean, just to clarify something, Mark, the it was another interesting detail of that story was they would get the money 
after the study ended, which was weeks long. It was like a three-week-long study. So they weren't even getting the immediate reward of the cash in hand. They were being promised the cash payout at the end of the three weeks, and they still chose uh, the cash over the drugs because it gave you know it was something to live for. It was something positive, and a lot of people are using drugs in circumstances to get them through, you know, to uh, to avoid co- consequence or to avoid you know their lives and their responsibility because they're just living that awful of a life. John, other thoughts you want to share? Go ahead. I was going to say it's interesting on that because uh, I mean when you really think about it, uh, the war on drugs. I mean I don't think anybody's sitting here and saying that the war, war on drugs is a complete success. It's been a complete and utter failure, um, especially in regards to marijuana. I cannot believe that we are still pursuing. Well, even the drug warrior who called earlier understood the marijuana issue. So we're definitely making progress on that one. Uh, we're trying to. Um, I believe that there is actually. We were shy of putting it on the uh, November ballot in Wichita by two two signatures, which there was a huge stink about that because apparently we had the two signatures, but because of some something, you know, they found a way. But. they're trying to do it again, so I'm very thankful for that. John, but good luck with that, really man. think about it. Oh, yeah, I've, I'm I'm really for it. Uh, I blow glass, so, you know, money in my pocket, too. Thanks for the uh, call tonight, dude. But- I appreciate hearing from you. There's more coming up here in moments. I think he meant glass pipes, just to clarify for listeners that didn't know what that meant. The toll-free number <laughs> is 855 I thought he was talking about exo- glass-packed exhaust systems. 3733 Time to end the insane war on drugs. What about legalizing prescriptions as well? I say it all needs to happen. More coming up. This is Free Talk Live. You share your thoughts. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. And you can also get some great deals on gold and silver pieces through our friends at Midas Resources at gold.freetalklive.com. Yeah, a lot of people have been uh, trying to pick up some precious metals right now. Prices are quite low. Um, I I mean, just amazingly low. You can get great deals at gold.freetalklive.com. Whether you want your gold or silver as a hedge against inflation, as uh, perhaps a barter currency in case things go really badly, or an investment. Look, I think they're going to go up. Uh, it seems it's, it seems impossible that they couldn't to me. So um, I'm recommending gold and silver right now. Gold.freetalklive.com. It's a, it's a great deal over there at Midas Resources. Gold.freetalklive.com. Yep, let's continue with your calls here. John listening in Charleston, West Virginia to WVTS. Hello, John. You're on Free Talk Live. John. I have to agree with almost everything you guys are saying. Uh, I think it's a war on culture. I mean... They have their own networks uh, set up where they can uh, transport guns and drugs down below the border. Who's they? And uh, the government. I don't, I don't know. I mean, the yeah. infamous them. <laughs> well, there have been a lot of stories over the years about people within the government, whether it be the CIA or the military, who have been uh, utilizing their government connections and their abilities to traffic drugs. Uh, even some allegations suggesting that the CIA is involved at high levels in bringing the drugs in. So there's always some sort of interesting story like that. Yeah, we got these signs set up uh, around here, like on the, on the side of the interstate, don't do drugs, it'll ruin your life. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, you can't vote, you can't own a gun if you get convicted of having too much. Uh, I really think that it's, it's a war on culture and <laughs> that's a good uh, point don't get uh, caught doing drugs the system will ruin your life because <laughs> i can tell you i've done plenty of drugs in my life and it's never been ruined by drugs because i've always been a responsible drug user what about you john uh, well i i really think drugs changed my life and uh you know it, it kind of woke me up to a lot of things that were going on not just in the drug area of everything Absolutely. I'm on board with that. Thanks for the call tonight, man. I do appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, look, I'm not advocating that kids go out and get high. Uh, I wouldn't advocate that. I would suggest that uh, people who are mentally mature enough to uh, be interested in taking uh, various different mind-altering substances should do research, whether we're talking about prescription or not, we're talking about illegal drugs or not. Do research before you put something in your body. Whatever that is, Uh, you know, talk to a doctor, talk to uh, drug experts, people on the Internet. Of course, Arrowhead.org, if you want to learn about both prescription and illegal drugs, Arrowhead is the best website I've ever seen. I can't recommend it highly enough. 
e r o w i d dot org. And I like I, like John have had some uh, very important experiences on uh, various different drugs from uh, MDMA to LSD to DMT. And I don't rec I don't uh, I don't regret it in the in the slightest. Even though there was one time in particular where I thought time didn't exist anymore, and I stayed up for several days on you had a psychotic episode. Totally I took you to the hospital. Went totally now, insane. On the other side of this, um, <laughs> I, I don't regret it. <laughs> Drugs petrify me in many ways, but I've seen I, you drink alcohol. I certainly, you certainly will hear, see me drink. That's alcohol. That's one of the hardest drugs out there, brother. But uh, I get you. Yeah. But I, the, like the concept of drugs scares me. Mm. I, I think that they can be quite dangerous, especially they in the hands be. of people who aren't responsible. And it seems to me that those that are least responsible are the most likely to try to get a hold of these things. But I can see the well, results. you just don't hear the stories about the doctors and lawyers and their drug-taking habits. True. They don't get busted as often. They don't... Uh, I've done the drugs a, with the doctors and yeah. lawyers at times, and it, I can tell you that they're reasonably responsible yeah, about it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the, the and also, they're not as likely to get caught. I mean, if you're driving a Lexus... You know, when you're going from your job to your house, you're not as likely to get pulled over unless you're black driving a Lexus. Uh, you know, you're generally not as likely to get pulled over as somebody driving some beat up old junker, you know, with long hair or something like that. So there's definitely profiling going on. Uh, and that's why you see people on the lower end of the economic strata being the ones getting busted. That doesn't mean there aren't, you know, bored housewives smoking methamphetamine who are, you know, while they're at home all day while they're waiting for their uh, lawyer husband to come home from work. That's happening. Uh, there's, I, I remember a guy I knew, he lived out on Bird Key in Sarasota, Florida, one of the most wealthy areas of the country. This is the place Not where poor. Yeah. Jerry Springer lives and uh, let's see, who else lives out there? Some of the guy, uh, Brian guy Johnson from a ACDC. ACDC yeah. I mean, this is a very, very expensive place to live. And this guy was a, um, was he a doctor? He's some sort of doctor type guy and he was a cocaine user. I mean, there's so, you know, it's not uncommon for rich people to use drugs. They can afford the drugs. Rich people don't have to go over and, you know, rob convenience stores, break into cars. Well, that's the other part of the war on drugs that never gets mentioned here. Um, that uh, you know, and I for, I've forgotten to mention it is is that when you make something illegal, you drive the price up because it's more oh, difficult yeah. to get, um, you know, to get it. So therefore, people that would otherwise do their heroin and do their cocaine or whatever and go to work just like many alcoholics do, now they have to do something that's more lucrative than work because they can't afford their habit. And so you're putting everyone like me who's not doing these things in danger, my family, my wife and child, because these people are more likely to break into my home, slit my throat, and take my money, whatever there is might, might be in the house. It's absolutely true. Let's go to your calls here. We've got Joe listening in Minnesota to WNMT in the northern part of the state. Hey, Joe. Hey, how's it going? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Um, I, I guess I'm... Um I've been listening, and uh, no, my vantage point from the on this deal is uh, I have <laughs> this area and uh, and our country has been saturated with not only prescription drugs but street illicit drugs as well. I, I just I can't believe that nobody has done anything to <laughs> control this. I oh, mean, they've been doing all kinds to, of things. They've been uh, no, spending they're, billions they're of dollars. To, they're trying to, but there is no stopping no, it. No, there's not. It because like you can't no, stop. There's no stopping it. You can't stop supply and demand. I mean, that's you can put as many dealers in jail as you want, and then somebody else is going to step up to fill their shoes because I mean, there's even, huge even, money to be made. Even, even right as I speak, the jails around here are just filled with, you know, I mean, I don't, I really, in all honesty, <laughs> I have been through the gamut with just about everything. And I'm not kidding you. I've been through the gamut with all kinds of drugs. I haven't been into the pharmaceutical end of things, but that in itself, I have seen, I have two people that I loved very much, OD. Oh. I mean, it's just, it's horrible. It's profound. I'm with you, Joe. Thanks for the call tonight. It's You're right. The, the drug war, it is horrible. And it's horrible to treat our, our loved ones in this insane way, which is what the war on drugs is. It's an insane way to deal with people who have, some of them have real problems. 
and they don't get better by putting them in jail. I was in jail the first time I was in jail uh, for court <laughs> contempt of court charges. I was in with a guy who was withdrawing from heroin. Well, I saw that guy in jail again years later, and I'll tell you what he was in jail for. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. This winter, next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel can be safely stored with your other supplies for many years and works in any gas-powered vehicle or backup generator. With the bitterly cold temperatures predicted for this winter, now is the best time to stock up on spare fuel. So go to GetSpareFuel.com. That's GetSpareFuel.com. GetSpareFuel.com. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. In this week's Onion Tips section, five easy ways to adapt your deplorable and parasitic existence for the upcoming Armageddon. Tip one, focus on preparing your home for any number of disaster situations, which still probably won't take your mind off of your impending death or the myriad mistakes you made in your short, pitiful life. Tip two, make sure your linens are clean prior to the upcoming catastrophe, as these are likely the very same sheets on which you will soon be slowly asphyxiated. Tip three, take some time off work and spend your last days free from the bonds of the oppressive machine that was just about the only thing giving you a purpose to your otherwise insignificant days. Tip four, spend your final waking minutes before the end of the world with your family, knowing full well you'd rather be doing a number of other gratifying yet completely depraved things. Right, sicko? In other news, a smitten foot fetishist thinks these may be the two. A woman and her gay best friend go on another one of their little adventures. And a dead daughter would have wanted a $220 million liability settlement. This is the Onion News Network. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition. You can dial in here and bring up anything. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about the insane War on drugs, which of course is just a war 
on people. It's a method for the uh, the government to have excuses to continue to invade our privacy and to invade our personal lives, to capture people from the streets, put them in prison cells, expand the prison industrial complex, ruining people's lives. I mean, it just never ends. And as was pointed out correctly by our last caller, it doesn't matter how much they spend. It doesn't matter what they do. They can't stop people from using drugs. It's this revolving door, this unending war that, you know, you're fighting a war against an inanimate object. You're fighting a war against a plant in some cases or chemicals in other places, in, in other cases. And it just doesn't matter. As long as you, you take one drug dealer out, another one steps up to fill his shoes because there's all kinds of money to be made. Because when you do business in the black market, you better be getting paid uh, based on the risks that you're taking. And so, therefore, you see dramatic increases in markups on prices that should be much, much cheaper. We'll continue. Your calls are welcome here. Uh, Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. By the way, antiwar.com has some amazing reporting. These guys do, they'll, you'll find news stories at antiwar.com that are just generally not going to appear anywhere in the mainstream media. They do original reporting. They also pull stories from international news sources about various different conflicts around the world. And they do a great job. And they've been doing a great job of this for many years. Antiwar.com, however, doesn't have a pot of gold. Uh, the war machine certainly has plenty of money. The military industrial complex, all antiwar.com has is you. And their staff, unfortunately, is down to just a skeleton crew uh, with minimal pay. They're committed to keeping their website online, uh, but they need your help. They can't do it for free. So you can donate by going to antiwar.com, and that's antiwar.com slash donate. Specifically, they are proudly, of course, and gladly taking your Bitcoin. Plus, they've got other methods that you can contribute. Antiwar.com slash donate. It's because war is the health of the state. Antiwar.com. All right, we're going right back into your calls and thoughts here. Ladies first, Tammy is listening in Montana. Tammy, where are you calling from tonight? Billings? Bozeman. Oh, Bozeman, welcome. Go ahead with your thoughts. Hey, I just wanted to talk about the, the drug thing, and I know one of you guys talked about uh, your own drug use, and I just kind of wanted to explore the premise of, do you think that possibly the drug use um, among people today is because of the boredom of the human mind? I mean, in the past, we've had to survive. We've had to fight for survival. And now we've got things pretty good. And so we have the luxury of being able to do these things. Okay, so that's an excellent question, Tammy. And here's how I would answer as somebody who has done some you know, level of uh, research personal uh, into this. Uh, first of all, people have been using drugs from the beginning of time. I mean, they say that civilization started because of beer, that uh, they just wanted to get enough, be able to grow enough hops, so they began staying in one place. So um, people have been, and you can see this in animals, by the way, where animals will eat marijuana buds off of uh, a cannabis. Oh, sure, and fermented fruit and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's a natural uh, drive for many humans to alter their state of consciousness. That's not unusual. I think what you're saying, though, or the, su the suggestion you're making can be true for some people. I mean, certainly, you know, idle hands do the devil's work. Um, if you're busy in life, you're less likely to spend that time, you know, imbibing various different substances. I I think there's some truth to that. Plus, the study that Mark was talking about uh, before found that the people who were coming from these very just terrible places, uh, urban environments, which are very unfriendly in which to live, they didn't have much to live for, they were unemployed or whatever, these guys were using drugs to cover up the problems in their lives. So there's no doubt that there's different motivations that drive drug use, um, but I wouldn't say that it's any new thing. It's it's uh, something that human oh, beings have been doing. It's a new thing at all, but what I'm saying is that you know we've become bored now so we have the ability and the the knowledge um, to alter chemicals as well we've been able to go forward and figure out a better to how to build a better drug how to build a, a more potent liquor you know it's not just beer anymore I mean yeah. it's not just uh, marijuana anymore. I mean, it's not the Mary Jane of my childhood. I know that. <laughs> uh, 
So well, I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's certainly I'm true that the through. cannabis is uh, is better these days, but that's because growing techniques have improved over time. There was still good weed back in the you know in the 70s and in the 60s. Just wasn't as uh, it wasn't as common, I, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, all things get better over time. Although certainly, it's worth pointing out that uh, liquor became popular, and uh, you know, during prohibition, it was when transporting beer was more inefficient. Uh, that liquor, you could transport more alcohol. It was more co- highly concentrated and in the same space as you know, filling the filling that same space with beer. And so, you know, as far as smuggling goes, it makes more sense to smuggle liquor. And so that's when it became more popular. Methamphetamine uh, became popular as well as crack cocaine because certain drugs were prohibited. Uh, crack cocaine was a was a response to the crackdown on cocaine in the 1980s. And of course, methamphetamine is uh, is a you know crazier version of speed, uh, basically. So, uh, so we would agree then, though, that our knowledge and our ability to transport things further and more has created uh, you know a larger um, area where people can get this and a more potent drug. I mean, well, ironically, the more potent the drugs have come has. about because of prohibition. So it's arguable. That if it weren't for drug prohibition, meth and crack cocaine would not exist. It's also it's hard to say. I'm not prohibition at all. Believe me, I'm just I'm just wondering about the human condition and our 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 boredom and well, I guess it's it's also an exploitation. You know, keep you know, there's money to be made, obviously. So mm-hmm. it's just it's a catch twenty two. No matter which way you look at it, I'm just I I just wanted to talk. Yeah, about, I wasn't you know, suggesting you were in favor. I, I want to make it clear. I wasn't suggesting you were in favor of prohibition. I was just pointing it out for the listening audience that if it sure. weren't for prohibition, then the the drugs yep. we have that are considered the hardest and most dangerous, some of them would not exist. And I thank you for the call, Tammy. Uh, and also something that wouldn't exist: bath salts. I don't know if you've seen the news stories about bath salts or. Or uh, what do they call them? Uh, they're, they're, synthetic. Uh, synthetic. Drug. There you go. Synthetic drugs. These are drugs that that definitely would not exist were it not for prohibition. The reason why synthetic drugs are popular is because things that are like cannabis that are much more benign than uh, these synthetic drugs are illegal. So because you can't buy cannabis legally, somebody came up with the idea of man, you know, sort of. A man Manipul- handling, manipulating, yeah, manipulating the, uh, the molecular structure, and since the laws are specific as to what uh, you know cannabis is and what right, uh, THC, you know whatever cocaine is, and all these things, you know they're they're it's a chemical, so therefore they altered the chemical and still had some of the similar results. And that's what synthetic drugs are. Now, right. in many cases, they've been outlawed, too, just with these wide-sweeping laws that haven't had a great deal of— They're trying to outlaw them, but they, they can't catch up fast enough to really— They're having a difficult time because, uh, at this point, it hasn't been tested out by courts. Uh, you know, Supreme Court hasn't ruled on any yeah. of this stuff, so it's all very interesting. And so what you end up with, with these bath salts, with these synthetic drugs— is you end up with drugs that sort of try to ape what... what, In many uh, cases, are very, very dangerous. They're they're not natural anymore. Right, and they are worse in a lot of cases than the drugs they're trying to ape. Well, some of them, uh, you know, weren't natural to begin with. I mean, MDMA is a man-made drug. Uh, And so So there's there's, uh, drugs out there that are trying to... uh, these, These... uh, these bath salts or whatever they're trying to ape those things but some of them the come down is much harder uh the, you know there's they're different drugs i mean there's different aspects to them the come down's and harder the the, the the distributors don't care the use uh, or the the active period of the drug the the high portion of the drug is shorter so you know the shorter uh, high encourages more often uh the the drug user to use it more often etc anyway all of those wouldn't exist today if it weren't for drug prohibition, if you could just go out and buy pot, then all of the synthetic versions wouldn't exist. I'm also interested in a world, uh, what is it going to be like in the United States when marijuana is legal across the United States for mm. a recreational drug? Will people step up to, because they call marijuana a gateway drug, and the only thing gateway about it is is that the government's made it illegal like all the other illegal drugs. That's right. and, then, and then people say, oh, well, you know, this wasn't so bad with marijuana. Maybe I'll try these other things. We're going to take your calls here. The toll-free number, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Try to fit you in if you're already on hold. Uh, In fact, uh, if you're not, if you don't get in tonight, we do it Sunday as well. We'll get you on. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. 
The event you've been waiting for is here. Lumber Liquidators, third annual full flooring yard sale. It's your chance to get first quality, full warranty, direct from the mill flooring at unbelievable closeout prices. Like oak laminate for an incredible 19 cents a square foot and pre-finished three-quarter inch solid maple for just $149. Plus beautiful bamboo for 63% less than other stores. Take advantage of our 20 years of savings with 20 month special financing and get even more unheard of flooring deals in our stores. Full flooring yard sale is Thursday through Monday only. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. With autumn in the air, it's time to think about getting ready for winter. And it's time to save at HerbalHealer.com. You'll find amazing seasonal savings to prepare you for the fight against cold and flu season. Like Oregacillin to promote lung health. 30 capsules, regularly $34.95, now only $25. HHA Olive Leaf, the natural antiviral, normally $16.95, now 60 capsules are just $12. HHA Elderberry Power, a great flu and virus fighter, regularly $16.95, 60 capsules, now $10. Save on all our homeopathic detoxes. Choose from lungs, kidney, liver, brain, libido, or whole body, normally $26.95, now just $20. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click on the Fall Winter Specials button to save on all our natural cold and flu fighting products. Also explore our Herbal Healer Academy correspondence courses that teach you how to handle your health naturally. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free here, although right now the phones are loaded up, so I probably shouldn't give you the number because we are in the very final segment of this edition of the program. But as I said, we've got a Sunday edition. Mark, you are one of the hosts of the Sunday show. Yeah. Which means there's plenty of time for you to get on uh, tomorrow night as well. So anything goes any night of the week here on Free Talk Live. And this time next week, Mark, we will be 
live during Keenvention at Keenvention.info. In fact, as we're speaking at this time next week, the Hallow Keen costume dance party will be underway. The very first ever Hallow Keen uh, costume dance party thrown by our very own Derek J here on uh, Free Talk Live. Uh, it's going to be a fundraising benefit for FreeRoss.org. We've talked about Ross Ulbricht. The man behind the Silk Road, allegedly. <laughs> Hasn't been proven yet, uh, but that's what the government uh, gang is going to try to prove in court. Hopefully they will fail in their endeavors because uh, Ross, you know, even if he turns out to, to have actually been the guy who created the Silk Road, I think he's a hero because the Silk Road has helped make the black market a safer place. The Silk Road has brought better drugs to the black market. More pure drugs, drugs that are actually marketed as what they are rather than being some sort of imposter uh, drug. It has made the transaction safer because the parties on the Silk Road are anonymous. Nobody knows from whom they are buying or to whom they are selling necessarily. So it's uh, it's an amazing technology. Either way, uh, whether he's you know so again, if he was involved in it, I think he's a hero. If he's not involved in it, then it's uh, it's a tragic shame that he's been charged with a crime that you know he didn't commit. So I want to support him either way. FreeRoss.org. You can go there to get behind Ross Ulbricht's uh, legal defense fund, and that's what the Halloween. Costume Dance Party is going to be benefiting on Saturday night during Keenvention. That is just one of many things you'll be able to do during Keenvention. We'll be premiering the 101 Reasons film, which is a 101 Reasons that Liberty lives in New Hampshire. That has never been seen before publicly. That'll happen during Keenvention. All kinds of great panel discussions. We just announced the Secession panel is coming back this year uh, with Rob Mathias as the host. He's uh, also known as the host of the Rebel Love Show. We've had him on Free Talk Live uh, once in the past, and he was great, so I'm looking forward to that. There's lots of different panel discussions, speeches, uh, so much happening at Keenvention, and I'm looking forward to it. It kicks off on Friday morning, bright and early, at 9 a.m. with a legislative panel, and uh, you can get the full schedule over at Keenvention.info. Tickets are still available, and they're still just 60 bucks for the entire weekend. Don't miss out on this. It's a great excuse to come up to New Hampshire, check out the community of liberty-loving people that are here now as part of the Free State project, the idea of moving liberty-oriented people, people who understand that the war on drugs is insane and it needs to end, but also they understand about freedom in general, that you should be free to live your life how you want, so long as you don't harm anyone else. So if you haven't checked out the Free State Project, you really should if you love liberty, and you can do that at freestateproject.org, and then come on up and visit us during Keenvention this next coming weekend, starting on Halloween, October 31st. Go to keenvention.info, lock in your tickets now. And or just get them at the door. All right, let's go right back into your phone calls and thoughts. Cooper is listening in Indy to WIBC. Hello, Cooper. Hey, how we doing today, fellas? Super, go ahead. Um, well, years ago, back in the late 80s, I was diagnosed with ALL, acute lymphocytic leukemia. And Sorry during to hear that. that time, I had, I had a stroke, and no, I don't need anybody's sympathy on it. I did fine. Uh, I'm still alive. It's a plus. Excellent. It's a plus. Um, but... <laughs> but during that time, I had a stroke and chemical diabetes and several bouts of meningitis. But I didn't really agree with all their drugs, so a buddy of mine turned me on to smoking marijuana. Well, the chemo and everything that they gave me didn't agree with my system, but the marijuana helped me eat. Well, the chemo also stripped all the cartilage out from between my fingers and the joints. Oh, gosh. So over the years, I had become accustomed to trying to find marijuana. And after several arrests of, you know, possession charges and people wearing wires and things of that sort, I, I, I didn't want to deal with it no more. So I started growing my own. Hmm. I didn't want to deal with nobody. I didn't want anybody dealing with me. I didn't want to sell it. I didn't want to distribute it. I mean... The only thing I did is I smoked, and if somebody happened to come by that wanted to smoke with me, hey, let's have some fun. Here. I was a cultivator and a consumer. I was cool with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I ended up getting busted in 2004. Oh, I was no. at work. How? And the police came. I don't, still don't know. Somebody rolled over on me. I guess somebody that I wouldn't sell to because I'm not a dealer. I didn't want to sell it. Were I you had telling money. people you were growing job. it? No. But I got all my seeds out of Canada, so it was better quality than anybody else had around. Hmm. So, and it's kind of hard to cover the smell anyhow. When how you're long did you, go to, did you go to jail, and if so, how long? Well, the 
thing is, I didn't go to jail. And they pulled me off my work, put me in HR's office, and they proceeded to badger me as best they could, telling me that they were going to give me 25 years and put me under the jail. And for growing a plant. For ha- having one plant. That's all wow. I had was one plant. All right. But he was trying to get me to give him three names. Give me three names. I I, I don't know three people, man. I don't deal with You're nobody. You're a grower. <laughs> I, don't, I, I grow my own weed. I don't yeah. deal with nobody. I don't. People just leave me alone. I don't want to fuck with somebody. Oh, we can't say that on Sorry, the radio. Buddy. we got to let you go. I did really want to hear the story. It's unfortunate. Call so. back in some other time and tell us the story because we're interested yeah, in it. But. I did want to hear what happened and why you didn't end up in jail after they threatened you with uh, 25 years, and it's a shame. He said that for those that don't know, he dropped the F-bomb. We had to uh, we had to dump him. All right, we continue on with your calls and thoughts. Uh, we've got, let's see, Vince listening in Livingston, Montana to KPRK. Hey, Vince. Hey, I wanted to talk to you guys about the circular insanity of the drug war. Please. And uh, I got a friend that's an addictionologist up here, and he tells me up here in good old cowboy Livingston, Montana, we got a problem. And it's that new restrictions on prescription painkillers, uh, push, pushing them into uh, more restrictive classes, uh, making them harder to get, and making doctors... Uh, much more reluctant to uh, issue them. Oh, yeah. Doctors are scared driving. to death. Yeah, I guess the doctors just don't want to mess with it. They don't want They're getting investigated also if That's they right. issue too many prescriptions. So because of this, uh, pres- people that have pain issues, and the thing that's needed most on this planet is a good pain medication that doesn't get you high. Mm. That I want to I want to invest in that stock. Forget Apple. I want that stock right there. But... Anyway, these new laws are now driving people with long-term pain issues to go buy cheap heroin, which is easier to get yeah. and cheaper than the prescription drug medication. Ironically, the heroin is grown in Afghanistan, where they just announced a record all-time crop of opium, uh, thanks to uh, the uh, Mission Accomplished boys over there. Uh, 209,000 really hectares of the plant were grown in Afghanistan in the year of 2013. And this with uh, all the military guys standing around. You're right, uh, Vince, the war on drugs does drive crazy incentives for uh, for the users. And I thank you for the call tonight. Let's bring Matt on it in Orlando. You're on Free Talk Live, Matt. Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, sir. Um, I just wanted to address uh, a chestnut that I've that I hear over and over more so recently, and that is blaming the user for the violence that's perpetrated on the supply side of the, uh, of the, of the, uh, drug equation. That you is, mean say, like oh, you, when you buy drugs, you support terrorism, that kind of thing? Precisely. But mm-hmm. that, the terrorism thing, that's a whole other nonsense, uh, non-starter, but, uh, but just, you know, Oh, you know, how dare you, you know, buy heroin Ian, don't you know what these people do cutting off heads and so on and so forth, mm. which is it's compelling when you first hear it. But ultimately, if you think about it, it's an extremely lazy position. And it does it. What it doesn't do is address the fundamental uh, forces which 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 drive these, uh, you know, the, well, you just rebut it stuff. with why do you pay your taxes? Don't you know those people kill people with remote control airplanes around the world? Zing. Sure, exactly. Why are you driving a car? Where, uh, you know, don't you know what what uh, you know what we do for petroleum? Uh, is is, is that a di- is that a diamond earring? You know, <laughs> do you have gold in your teeth. Yeah. Hey, Matt, good call, man. We're short on time, but I thank you for it. Let's bring uh, John real quick in here. John, you got about twenty seconds. Go. Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Go ahead, John in Charleston. Hey. You're on. Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to mention that I praise you guys for bringing this subject up. And I know I don't have a lot of time, so I want to leave it at that. And then I want to say, um, I don't think marijuana is the gateway drug. I think sugar and caffeine <laughs> is. <laughs> that everybody gives their kids, you know, at an early age. And that really starts them out. And then they go to cigarettes and tobacco and then, you know, alcohol. And then to pot. But anyways, 
uh, John, I'm glad you appreciate the show, man. Call us to uh, call us tomorrow night if you got more comments, and call earlier, and we'll definitely get you on for longer. Um, and uh, if you didn't get in, um, please, any old night, we're here seven nights a week. You can join us live seven to ten at night Eastern time, whether we are on your local radio station or not. We'll be here. Join us online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Have a great weekend. Pop quick. Hi, I'm Montel Williams. Most of you know me as a talk show host, but I'm also an author, actor, single father of four, a fitness writer, avid snowboarder, and I'm also a medical marijuana patient. Like many of the million people who are living with multiple sclerosis, I'm in pain every single day. And sometimes my nerves are so raw that if you brushed up against me in an elevator, I'd scream. I can't sleep at night from the pain, and sometimes the spasms in my legs are so intense they will wake me up throughout the night. I've tried the strongest prescription medications available, and I'm going to tell you, they do not work. In fact, they leave me in a stupor, and most of the time, it's impossible to even live your life. Now, I've tried medical marijuana, and I'm going to tell you something, it works. If you'd like more information about medical marijuana, you can contact the Marijuana Policy Project at mpp.org or call 1-877-JOIN-MPP. want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate well i know a guy who's really great it's the realtor mark warden do you want a home with 20 acres a lakeside cabin any takers for renters buyers and sellers too mark warden is the guy for you porcupinerealestate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, October 25th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.20 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,231 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $347. Antiwar.com reports a major crackdown in the Israeli-occupied West Bank saw troops shoot and kill 14-year-old Palestinian-American Orwa Abed El Wahan Hamad Wahab, who Israeli officials say was among a group of teens throwing rocks near the Palestinian city of Ramallah. Hamad was born in New Orleans and his family moved back to the West Bank when he was six. The U.S. State Department urged a speedy and transparent investigation. He was the only Palestinian killed yesterday and Israeli soldiers accused him of planning to throw a Molotov cocktail at traffic, endangering lives. Twelve other Palestinians were wounded. A number of Israeli officials were calling for troops to increase their use of force in a violent crackdown against Palestinian unrest. Israeli troops killing Palestinian teens rarely involves a significant public investigation, though the fact that this particular teen was a U.S. citizen could make the incident more difficult to sweep under the rug. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for 